It's a uh, 31 minutes ago. Good evening, and welcome to the April 18th, 2018 St. Charles County Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. At this time, I would request that everyone please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices, and please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Conditional use permit applications heard during tonight's meeting will be voted on by the Planning and Zoning Commission. The Commission will then make a recommendation on the applications, which will be submitted to the St. Charles County Council for their final decision. These applications will be scheduled for introduction at the Monday, May 14th, 2018 County Council meeting. Public comment regarding conditional use permit applications will be taken both tonight and at the County Council meeting on Monday, May 14th. Public comment on these applications will not be taken at any meeting of the County Council held thereafter. The following documents are introduced as a matter of record for this evening's public hearing and regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. The Unified Development Ordinance of St. Charles County, including zoning maps, the year 2025 Master Plan for St. Charles County, which includes the year 2025 future land use plan map. On tonight's agenda, we have a uh, conditional use permit request on the North, North Service Road E, conditional use permit request 596 Defiance Road, a rezoning and conditional use permit request at 903 Mothershead Road, and a conditional use permit amendment request located in the Femi Osage Creek Road. Um, that is the business on tonight's agenda uh, will then be followed by a discussion of the Commission on adopting uh, specific rules of procedure for our meetings. Uh, how we will proceed, I will read into the record uh, the application, then the Commission will ask staff for their report. Uh, at that time, the Commission can uh, ask questions from staff. Uh, then we will ask the applicant to come forward to uh, present their application and answer questions or concerns from uh, the commission. Uh, then we will uh, open the public hearing portion where if you have uh, comments to make regarding the application, you can come forward. Uh, this is a hearing of record, so everyone will ask, would be asked to be sworn in uh, as we are recording the, the events at this, this meeting. Uh, once the public hearing is closed, then we will ask the applicant to come back if they so choose to address any concerns uh, that may be brought up uh, during the public hearing. Uh, at that time, uh, we will close uh, that part of our discussion uh, and then the commission will uh, have an opportunity to discuss the proposal and then take a vote. Anyone who's gonna come forward to speak, we asked you to fill out one of our speaker's cards. They're there on the, on the rail. Uh, that way we make sure we get your name correct uh, in our minutes. Uh, the first uh, item on our agenda is conditional use permit request uh, th uh, located at 3111 North Service Road E. Uh, this is CUP 18-02. The applicant is James O'Donnell, or the owner rather is James O'Donnell. The applicant is Pat Ingold. The use requested is auto sales. The current property zoning is C2, General Commercial District. The area consists of 0.64 acres. It is located on the north side of the North Service Road East, approximately 120 feet east of Clinton Princeton Memorial Drive, adjacent to the city of Forestell located in Council District 1. Staff. Yes, this is a request, as you said, for the conditional use permit for automobile sales. Since the 1980s, essentially, this property has had automobile sales and or carnival, as I understand it, carnival um, equipment or carnival ride sales uh, for all that time period except for there was about a two-year gap recently where it wasn't used for that purpose. 
Um, when it was established for car sales in the 1980s, it, didn't, it was allowed by right, and it didn't require a conditional use permit. But subsequently, while they were operating, the ordinance changed so that a conditional use permit would be required. Now we have a new application because the former automobile sales had ceased for a couple of years. And so the application again is for automobile sales. The photograph that you see here, the aerial photograph, is actually about two years, two to three years old. So it's, it's showing how it was, it was previously used. Um, you'll see that it borders the city of Forestell. On the south is the North Service Road, the I-70 North Service Road and I-70. And to the east, there's agricultural zoning in the county and it's used for agricultural purposes. This property again is owned commercial. So um, I would characterize this as essentially um, requesting a use that has continued for many years because they're not proposing to expand um, what they're doing in any appreciable way or, or change the configuration, but essentially to, to reuse the property as it has been for some years. Um, county staff reviewed this in terms of the conditional use permit criteria, and it, that's covered in your memorandum, but we would note that we feel like it um, does conform to the conditional use permit criteria in terms of land use impacts for neighbors, um, noise, and any other uh, effects that it might have. And we recommend that the Planning Zoning Commission recommend approval of the conditional use permit. Any questions of staff? Did we receive any uh, letters either for or against? I know of no letters or communications either for or against. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? If not, uh, the applicant uh, care to come forward. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly dec declare and affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Patrick Engold, and my personal address? Uh, 706 Michael <laughs> Avenue, Wentzville, Missouri, 63385. Okay, go ahead. Approximately 18 years I've been out there in Wentzville. Um, I, don't, I don't know how you guys all slept last night. I didn't sleep very well. I'm kind of nervous, so I, I apologize. <laughs> uh, I've been a longtime resident. I, I am uh, actually moving into uh, my recently deceased, uh, deceased uh, mother's home, which is on the same outer road, which is very close uh, to the location that... Uh, that I'm asking for permission to to open my business. I currently have a location in O'Fallon, uh, and and I would hope to to move into this location uh, because I share the lot with uh, another individual, and I'd like to have my own place. Um, and I just would like the board to know, and, and the, you know any of the uh, uh, folks that live around there that that this won't be a, a, a lot where I have $500,000 cars, junky cars. They're going to be anywhere from 4000 to upwards of maybe $20,000. Uh, i am very professional, very clean. Uh, I want to uh, have it very nicely presented, and, and it'll just be a nice operation. It'll be nice and clean and, and not kind of a turn into a salvage yard as, as some of these places can do. Um, and you, you know, anybody could go by where we're at now and, and see that that's that's how I currently operate. Um, just looking to, um, you know, it's a it's a big deal for me and and my children, and just trying to you know give it the good college try here and, and start up a, a place and um, working uh, down the road with a, uh, a lease option permit with the gentleman. So it's a big deal for me to purchase the place down the road so I have a vested interest of, of making it nice and, and keeping it nice. Um, so that's that's what I can offer you. I'm, I'm open to any questions that you may have and I would appreciate any considerations you might give me in, in my endeavors. Any questions for the applicant? Is the site as we see it the way it would remain or do you have any uh, contingency plans to expand the footprint of where the uh, parking and buildings, et cetera, are? Uh, not currently, I don't. There's a pretty good amount of space. It's gonna take me a while to grow to the, 
to be that large where I would need more space. If I did, I would, uh, um, you know, certainly, you know, get the appropriate permitting. But at this time, no, it's just going to be to make it, you know, kind of beautify everything uh, that's there uh, and, and, and make it nice and then grow from there gradually is, is my plan. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any other questions, the applicant? Thank you. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate your considerations. Now we'll open the public hearing. Is anyone here to speak regarding CUP 18 02? Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing and bring this back to the commission. Discussion. Make, Make a motion approval. to approve. Second. <coughs> Mr. Griffin, Mr. Mr. McBride, how do you vote? Yes. I vote yes. Mr. Clary? Yes. Mr. Leonard? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Klinghammer? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. And Mr. Sutley is, not, is absent. So motion passes. Thank you, Jim. <coughs> <laughs> Next on our agenda is conditional use permit uh, CUP 18-03, owner applicant Chandler, Chandler Hill Holdings, LLC. Use requested building structures or open areas for conducting weddings and or wedding receptions or other private parties a restaurant and to amend the conditions of ordinance 06-134, which in 2006 granted a con conditional use permit for a winery. Property zoning currently is a agricultural district. The area is 42.07 acres. Location is on the south side of Defiance Road, approximately 1,700 feet northwest of Howell Road. This is located in Council District 2. <coughs> Staff. Uh, again, this is a request to amend the conditions for a 2006 conditional use permit um, granted for a winery at this location. And additionally, uh, for conditional use permits for uh, two other uses. Um, and probably the best way to move forward is explain how, how this came about. Uh, Chandler Hill Winery um, asked to, to, to discuss their existing conditions in their 2006 conditional use permit and uh, came to the county um, to talk about possibly amending one or more of those conditions. And we suggested that as long as you're going forward and going all through the process of the Planning Zoning Commission and the County Council, uh, why not um, also uh, go through the process of getting explicitly approved those uses on the property such as the special events and the restaurant. What I mean by that is at the time that in 2006 there was no conditional use permit required uh, or there was really no addressing of the special events in conditional use permits. But you'll remember I guess it was last year that the county council for the first time started uh, requiring conditional use permits for such. So. Um, we advised that we thought it would be a good idea to basically um, buttonhole the um, existing uses of uh, events that are taking place, as well as the restaurant, and to um, move forward in that way. So that's essentially what's here before you tonight. The conditions that Chandler Hill Winery are proposing to remove that were imposed in 2006. Make sure I get this. One would be to remove a condition that 75% of the wine for sale on site must be produced from grapes either grown on premises or grown on an area of not less than five acres in size within St. Charles County. And second, they asked that the condition that in any winemaking year, 
the quantity of wine consumed by or delivered to customers in the winery shall not exceed two times the quantity of wine currently in our production in the winery. I should note that those two conditions were part of the definition of a winery in 2006. So in 2006, when this winery was approved, those two conditions were inserted. Um, but really, they're, at that time, the definition of winery. Since that time, the definition of winery has changed a few times. So the applicants have expressed that what they'd like to do is, rather than um, have to abide by these conditions that reflect the, the old definition of winery, they would like to abide by the current condition, uh, excuse me, current definition of a winery, just like other wineries need to do. And so they see this or view this as basically putting them on an even playing field with other, um, th those are my words. They will put, see this as putting them on an even playing field with other uh, wineries in St. Charles County. Questions for staff? So yeah. are you saying? I, oh, yeah. uh, going back to the winery, I, I was actually at the county council. I had the original plans when Chandler Hill mm -hmm. you know, built that. Um, I think I, it, in your recommendation here, um, quote unquote, if the Planning and Zoning Commission determines that the requested condition amendments are not consistent in the purpose and content with the nature or of the proposal as originally advertised for a public hearing, and not consistent in purpose and content with the nature of the conditions imposed by the governing body, the re request shall be considered as a new conditional use permit application for review. I'm a little confused because at the, all this definition of wine here, correct, the, the uh, definition changed, right. but the uh, wine growers, you know, the purpose of that was to protect uh, St. Charles County uh, viticulture with the, the three main grapes that we grow here in this county. And uh, we've had uh, people before us under this definition of winery, and uh, they were making wine that none of the wine, uh, one of them was on Benny and uh, Double D. Uh, we th found through question and answer, we were told untruths that uh, the wine was being, the grapes were coming from St. Charles County. They were not indeed, every single bottle, 100% was coming from St. James Winery. I'm for developing our viticulture here in St. Charles County. Uh, I think it's a growing business, and certainly I'd rather have the taxpayer's dollars here in St. Charles County than going out to Herman, Missouri to have Missouri wine out there. Um, and I, from what you've put in here, um, I think probably getting more clear what is, maybe it has to be reviewed again, what is the definition of a winery? Because it's not crystal clear. And um, with Channel Hill, you know, they've changed and, uh, you know, have wine from California, Oregon, different countries. They have uh, wedding events, um, other private parties, which is good. Uh, but there's 2,000 restaurants and different venues, and not only in St. Charles and St. Louis County, that do the exact same thing, but they're not, I guess, characterized as a winery, per se. Um, one of the people here, even sitting here, does the same thing, uh, but he's not called a winery. And I think it's, uh, from the public standpoint, um, and not to rename it, but I think there's a, uh, we need clarification what actually is a winery in St. Charles. And it goes back to what you said here. The uh, original purpose was to protect uh, St. Charles County wine growers and the grapes that are grown here in St. Charles County. Um, so I'm still a little hazy on this, um, you know, with the definition, and we're taking a uh, an original, I understand the reasoning, we want to bring it up, but wouldn't it be better just to have a clean slate, as you suggest here, a new conditional use permit? This is what we want to do, we want a restaurant, full service bar, we want weddings, we're going to have bar mitzvahs, we're going to do this, that, and the other thing, and not under um, the definition of a winery. Well, they are proposing 
what you have before you are two conditional use permit application, or two, two, two conditional uses, one for the special events and the other for, um, I'm sorry, for the restaurant. In the existing winery, they want to amend those conditions. So it's, it is similar to what you're talking about. The, the yeah. definition of a winery today is any establishment, any establishment that makes more than 200 gallons of wine annually, including grape crushing, fermenting, and bottling. So those okay. three different activities together, taken together. With or with, without subsidiary accessory uses, such as sale of wine related products, public wine tasting, sale and service of food and tours of winery. Any such establishment shall have five acres or more of wine grapes cultivated on premises. All wine produced at the winery must be produced under a state of Missouri domestic winery license. At least 50% of the grapes used in the wine produced on site must be grown within St. Charles County. Produced at the winery. At least 50% of the grapes used in the wine produced on site must on be grown site. within St. Charles County. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the I definition. I mean, we've had a lot. You remember we've had, uh, just recently, we had the Sunflower Hill Farms wedding event off 94. Uh, they're doing the same thing, catering food, doing wine. They have a Mother's Day thing. Yeah. Uh, what, a year ago down in Augusta, we had that company from Dallas that came in, and they've been in other states. What they were going to do is build a uh, venue there, do the same thing, basically it would be a... Uh, an out-of-state winery, except it was right across from the church and it was voted down. There were two other uh, con uh, uh, people that were still coming under, what I, my point was, they were coming under a uh, winery, and then there was a couple up in north uh, near St. Paul. Um, there was a noise abatement issue, uh, but I think it's a gray area where, um, you know, what is a winery? I, I know what you just read, but it's still Vague well, in my mind. One of the essentials is, this is how um, <coughs> county planning and zoning staff would interpret it. One of the essentials is that grape crushing, fermenting, and bottling would need to take place on that particular site. Or on that premises. site, at yeah. Chandler Hill. Right. Okay. Yeah, that would be our interpretation of this winery definition. <coughs> and did they want to eliminate that condition? No. Okay. No, they don't want to eliminate that. <coughs> they want to produce wine on site. Um, but not have to abide by the 75% rule any longer. That doesn't even exist for the, in the definition right. of a winery. And I will say it's actually, if you have a restaurant, it really changes the dynamic and the numbers anyway. Because if you have a restaurant, CUP, you can serve wine in the restaurant. There's no limitation on how much you serve necessarily or where the wine comes from. So. Um, I'm just explaining that. When this was when this was contemplated about the 75% and the 50% and all that, it was thinking more, I think, in terms of a standalone winery or at the winery. You know, you have buses pull up and, and people get out and they go to the winery and they have <coughs> samples and then they get back on the bus and leave. And right. So, but you know, since that that time, the business, in my thinking, has really evolved, in that there's these other complementary uses, you might call them, like uh, restaurants and special events. And what I've heard from wineries, I'm not an expert on this, but what I'm hearing from wineries in St. Charles County that the special events are, for some of them, it's essential in order to help them you know, keep moving forward. Yeah, well, the uh, businesses are tough. Probably 80% of the new businesses fail, and I think the wineries that do stay open, uh, the tough parts are uh, getting through the winter months. Obviously, because when it's the summer, we get, I'm a big proponent for St. Charles County. I don't know whether anybody would uh, misquote me, but I think <clears throat> on a good day, we get more visitors than the St. Louis Zoo and the Science Center combined uh, down in the wine country. You can go by the traffic and not find a parking place and with the Katy Trail. So it's, uh, uh, but the lure again is uh, wineries. Uh, and I use uh, Herman as an example, um, you know, German wines. Um, as far as I know, I haven't been out there for a while, but all the, all the wines out there are Missouri wines. Um, I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, it's uh, your interpretation. I, just, I think it's just a gray area. And uh, again, in lieu of all these other uh, companies, uh, as I cited with um, the farm down in, um, 
Augusta, a couple up in, uh, near St. Paul. Uh, they're call all coming under this wine thing. And you just mentioned a thing like restaurants, but a lot, I think most people go to a restaurant or even Chandler Hill, they don't just go just to drink. They're here, they're there for the food. Uh, that's a primary attraction to go to a winery and then as an axillary part of that, uh, the wine is there. And there's a lot of teetotalers that just go and if you have good food, you're gonna exist and whether, whether you're gonna have iced tea or another <coughs> beverage, that's secondary. You don't go there, we're gonna go slam you know, wine down and we're not gonna eat anything. I don't, as far as I know, none of the wineries down here have that type of customer. So the, um, the emphasis, I think, the primary emphasis is more of a restaurant, um, you know, what they're doing, and then uh, happens to be a winery and doing special events. And they do a first class job, don't get me wrong. But I just, uh, the definition, I think we just keep, in taking out conditions, I think we're just going down a different path here. I would say, uh, if I could add, please, that in 2013, um, there was an ordinance amendment for the Balducci Winery to do exactly the same, pretty much exactly the same thing. And so in 2013, Balducci Winery, they had a conditional use permit uh, from 1999 for a, a winery. And in 2013, the county council at their request of Balducci, they removed the, I'm quoting here, 75% of all wines and juices offered for sale must be produced on the premises and removed 50% of all juices and wines offered for sale must come from grapes grown in St. Charles County. And then um, they replaced that with the use of the site as a winery shall meet all unified development ordinance requirements. That was um, in 2013 for a, a different winery for Balducci. To, to simplify this just a little bit, uh, the, the rules that they're asking that they go by, the new rules with when you when you strike number four and number five, that's gonna, but that applies to all wineries in St. Charles County, right? No, four and five applied to all wineries in 2006, but no longer. Are there some wineries that still have to live under conditions four and five in St. Charles County? I actually don't know um, all of them, but I can say, for instance, Balducci doesn't, um, Montel does not, I looked at, the, at their conditions. Um, Montel, in 1999, when they were originally approved, I'll find this here. Honestly, the, the conditions, there's a variety of them. But I'm sorry, in 1991, when Montel was approved, they didn't even have ordinances at that time. They just have minutes of the decisions of the county court, and there was three judges. And, and so their decision was that they approved a conditional use permit for what's now Montel Winery. And they had two conditions, the county building department review and approve the capacity of the septic system and the highway department review and approve the plans for the entrance. And that, that was it at that time, so. Um, if I can add here, procedurally speaking, they are requesting the removal of four, five, and six, and seven. Um, yeah. And for that to make sense, we would have to replace that with a statement like um, what Robert just read off of the 2013 um, ordinance for the Balducci winery. Uh, that is what is being requir requested right now. However, to even get there, you need to make sure that the requested revisions are still consistent with the content and purpose, nature of the condition imposed by the governing body, and they're not, or they're consistent in purpose and content with the nature of the proposal as originally advertised for public hearing. So this, you have to consider how revisions, how removal of these two criteria, or four, I should say, um, fit into the original scheme that was in effect at the time that the original CUP was enacted. Um, if it does fit that, then this can be dealt with as a true revision. So you just go through the processes that are explained here to just revise it. However, if you guys determine that it does not 
meet that content, then you have to consider this as a new CUP and deal with it under the same rules and processes for the new CUPs. Well, thanks, RDD. I think mm -hmm. that's an interesting point. Is I, I guess my concern is what was originally approved was a traditional winery, regardless of what we call things or what, what it's named. And what it's, what, if I understand correctly what's being proposed, and I, and I know the applicant and his attorneys here, but as I understand what's being proposed will be a restaurant that also serves wine. No. That, that's not correct. Well, we'll get to you in just a minute. So, okay. Um, the, I, I, I'm, you know, with outdoor seating. So it's, I, I'm, I'm a little confused on, on what a winery is in today's world if it doesn't, if it's not required to make wine. It's my understanding that they actually would like to comply with the current wine making as the current ordinances exist right now. So and what they're basically says you do have to do those three activities of yes, harvesting, yes, crushing and, yes. and making wine. And they will tell you today that they are willing to do all those. Because it's um, been my understanding is that that they got rid of all that equipment. So I and that you know they can speak to that. Uh, my point here was that what they're trying to do is basically take advantage of the fact that they do have a CUP instead of taking the chance with the new CUP application that they're not guaranteed the okay. CUP. Thank so, you. I appreciate that. Any other questions for staff? When the, the applicant will probably tell us, when was the last time they actually produced some bottled wine? Um, the applicants couldn't tell you that, but what we talked about is within the last year or two that they made wine. Okay. Any other questions for staff? If not, we'll call the applicant forward. You saw me declare and affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Brad Goss, 120 South Central Suite 700, St. Louis, Missouri, 63105. Okay, go ahead, Brad. Okay, I'm gonna try and clarify what obviously is very confusing. In 2006, St. Charles County had a definition of a winery, and it required a conditional use permit. That's what Chandler Hill got. That's what Balducci got. And there were various kinds of conditions with that. Chandler Hill, like all other wineries, began hosting weddings, and they had a restaurant, like almost all of the other wineries. I'm gonna show you that list later on. And those were considered ancillary uses to the winery use and the county allowed it to happen. We've obtained all of the necessary permits, building permits, inspections, liquor licenses, health permits, fire inspections, every year. County officials have come out, permitted us, allowed us to do all of those things because they were considered ancillary to the winery um, use. About two years ago, the county changed its definition, and it wanted to clarify this. So it changed the definition of winery, and it did what you wanted them to do. It said, this is a winery, this is a restaurant, and this is weddings. If you want to do those things, go get a conditional use permit for each of those things, okay? So Chandler Hill, which has always been doing this stuff, never has changed, and we are not gonna change anything that we're doing if this is granted. We're gonna do the same stuff we've always been doing, is simply trying to put its conditional use permit in order under the current county ordinances. That's all we're doing. So we have to amend our winery conditional use permit 
in order to go under the current definition of a winery, and Robert read to you what those conditions were. We have to produce 200 gallons of wine, at least 50% of the grapes of wine produced on site have to come from St. Charles County. We have to have a Missouri license uh, and a couple other conditions that are in that definition. We have to crush, we have to ferment and barrel and bottle. That's a winery. That's what St. Charles calls a winery now. That is what Chandler Hill will do, because that's what you call a winery. Chandler Hill wants to be a winery. Chandler Hill also has a restaurant, just like almost every other winery out there. Most of your wineries out there don't have any conditional use permits at all. They've just been operating. And the county has said, well, if and when they want to change things, then we'll ask them to update their conditional use permits. So we're going through this process because we simply want to clarify what we're doing, have our restaurant operations so that everybody knows, yes, we have a conditional use permit for our restaurant, and we have a conditional use permit for the wedding events, because you now require conditional use permits for those things. So that's all that's happening here. There's nothing new under the sun happening with this conditional use permit. All they're doing is putting themselves in conformance to the way you're currently defining things, okay? So I'll take you through the presentation, but I want to clarify all that because I think we're kind of getting our heads wrapped around an axle and getting pretty confused about what we were asking for. As for the conditions, we want to eliminate the condu two conditions in our winery definition that no longer apply to wineries. You don't require any winery to do that, and there's no winery in St. Charles County today that does those two conditions. So that's why we want to get rid of them. The last two conditions about the, condition, the uh, permit uh, for access uh, and the screening, we are perfectly content leaving those in. We asked for them to come out only because we thought they were moot. We obtained the permit a decade ago. We put in the screening a decade ago, so we didn't think it was necessary. But we are not trying to change the deal. So if that was the way it was interpreted, that's our mistake, and we would request that those two conditions remain because we're not trying to change the deal. We simply want to be in conformance with what your current ordinances require. So that's where we're going with all of this when all the dust settles. Does Chandler Hill produce wine? You betcha. It does. And it produces on site. And we'll go through all of that as well. So I'll try and take you a little more quickly through this because I kind of wanted to go back and just kind of reset the deck chairs just so we were all. We've got all night. Yeah. yeah, well, you don't need all night. We're not going to do that. All right, so let's take you to Chandler Hill. Chandler Hill's off Defiance Road. You've got a four no, 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 no. You've got a 40-plus acre site, which is what's required for a winery under uh, St. Charles County's requirements. We are zoned in the agricultural zoning. Um, our plans for our site, we had to submit a concept plan. We have uh, five acres of vineyard. Uh, it's 5.02 acres of vineyard. That's part of the current definition of a winery. Uh, that was not part of our definition in 2006. But we will have five acres of grapes that we will produce wine from on our site. And that's shown on that concept plan. We have an existing restaurant and wine building. It's about 6,200 square feet. Uh, it's shown on the concept plan. We have three parking areas. Um, There's a parking area up front next to the, uh, next to the uh, road that provides access. Uh, there's another asphalt parking lot uh, immediately interior from that. And then there's parking next to the building. There's about 48 parking spaces next to the building. And then there's roughly around another 180 parking spaces down near to the road. We also provide a shuttle service. Uh, from the parking that's near to the road so that anyone who has uh, special needs, uh, ADA or some kind of uh, uh, mobility impairment, uh, we're able to use that shuttle to bring them up from that parking lot. Uh, there is a um, uh, pond, a lake uh, that separates the parking area from the vineyard areas. 
uh, and um, the main winery itself. This is a shot of the winery, and this is a shot of some of the um, grapes uh, that are on the vineyard. Uh, again, another shot of the um, vineyard, uh, and you can see the pond in the background, and then some of the bottles of wine that are for sale. This property, as I said, was granted a CUP in September of 2006, Ordinance 06134. Those are the conditions, the seven conditions uh, that Chandler Hill uh, originally had imposed on it because those were the conditions of a winery at that time. So the two conditions that we are asking uh, to be eliminated uh, are the ones that no longer apply under the definition of a winery. Uh, which is the 75% of the wine for sale on the site must be produced from grapes either grown on the premises or grown on an area not less than five acres in size within St. Charles County. And in any winemaking year, the quantity of wine consumed by or delivered by cus to customers in the winery shall not exceed two times the quantity of wine currently under production in the winery. Those two conditions are no longer conditions in your winery definition. We're asking for those to be eliminated. We're asking for everything else to remain, including conditions six and seven. As I said, that's a mistake in our application. So Chandler Hill has operated under that 2006 winery definition from 2006 to the present time. They have been an award-winning uh, winery. Uh, they've received awards uh, in many competitions, most recently in the 2015 Missouri Wine Competition. I've listed some of those awards that they received uh, for their uh, Missouri wines, very much grown from St. Charles, produced from St. Charles grapes. Chandler Hill has all of the winemaking equipment that's required. They never sold their winemaking equipment. Whoever told you that was mistaken. They have all the crushing equipment. They have all the bottling equipment. They have all the barreling equipment. Uh, and they will operate as a winery, as is required under the definition of a winery in St. Charles County. Uh, their 2017 production, I've noted on this slide, uh, they produced 1,500 gallons of Vignol, 600 gallons of Norton, and 1,600 gallons of Chambersen uh, winery, uh, wine rather, that were uh, all from grapes either on site or from St. Charles County. Uh, in addition, they've got 25 barrels of wine that are currently aging uh, that will be in production uh, and bottled. So the rationale for our CUP, for our conditional use permit, again, I talked about this. We expect that we will comply uh, and that our CUP should say that we will comply with the current definition of a winery. So much as the staff said to you to uh, incorporate the language like you did with Balducci, that makes perfect sense to us because that's what we're trying to achieve. We expect that we have to produce uh, at least 200 gallons of wine annually. We expect that we have to have five acres or more wine grapes cultivated on the premises. Uh, we expect that the wine uh, produced uh, on the site will be produced under a state of Missouri domestic winery license and at least 50% of the grapes used in the wines produced on site must be grown within St. Charles County. That is how we will operate as a winery. That's your definition of a winery. We will comply with it. So that's what we're asking to be our conditions. And so the things that don't fall in those conditions, we're asking to be taken out of uh, our definition of a winery. We are also asking that we formalize our restaurant use as a conditional use, and we formalize our wedding use as a conditional use, because that's what you now require in the agricultural zone for those uses. You did not require that back in 2006, and so we've been operating for the last um, you know, 12 plus years as an ancillary use with both of those uh, uses. So uh, in terms of the rationale, uh, we believe that we meet all the rationale and requirements for uh, the conditional use permit. We believe we do not we are not a detriment to the public health, safety, or general welfare. We believe the evidence of that is that the county has consistently permitted every one of these operations every year for every year of our operation since those operations began. 
If we were a detriment to the public health, safety, or welfare, St. Charles County would not have issued those permits. So I believe those permits answer that question. Um, we are not injurious to uh, the surrounding area, the immediate vicinity. We do have the buffer put up that was required under our conditional use permit. Uh, and we certainly are not impairing property values. We've seen no evidence of any property values being impaired by our operation. Um, and we are not impeding the normal and orderly development of property in the area, which is one of the requirements. I think St. Charles County has already answered that question by allowing wineries uh, in the agricultural zone. This is consistent uh, with uses in the uh, agricultural zone. With respect to our amendment, the reason we believe we are conforming with our, amend our original CUP is because the original CUP was intended to have us conform to what you call the winery then. We are now asking to be conforming to what you're calling a winery now. We still want to be a winery. We don't want to change. We want to continue as a winery. So we believe we are conforming to what our original CUP that was issued uh, because we are continuing as a winery, but we're continuing under your current criteria, not under some old criteria that no longer apply. We have adequate utilities. We have adequate asset, uh, access roads. Our road to the uh, winery is paved, uh, so we don't have dust problems. Uh, we have uh, uh, we've made sure that we've uh, gotten the necessary permits uh, that are required uh, with respect to our operation. Um, noise has not been an issue. Uh, we've not had complaints uh, from neighbors with respect to noise. We've not had complaints with respect to any odor. Our traffic is going to, op uh, our operation is not going to change. We'll continue to operate the same way we've always operated. And we've not ex experienced traffic problems with our operation. With respect to our operational hours, we want to keep our current operational hours. So the winery itself is open Monday through Saturday from 11 to 5, and on Sunday from 10 to 5. The restaurant's open from 11 to 4, Monday through Saturday, and from 10 to 4 on Sunday. Special events that would take place, a wedding during the week, that would close down by 1045 on the weekend by 11 p.m. The only exception would be New Year's Eve. We would go till midnight with respect to New Year's Eve in terms of the celebration of New Year's Eve, which is typical of what happens. So we are requesting that we be able to keep our current hours of operation. I've included a letter that we did receive uh, from one of our neighbors, uh, Dr. Sudicum, uh, who was, lives in the area over on Matson Hill Road. We didn't solicit this. He sent this to us, um, just thanking us for our operation. Uh, after having uh, done business with us and uh, being um, a member of our wine club and having uh, participated in, in events there. Um, I'd like to just kind of take you through some of the um, other wineries so you get us in a sense of what happens at other places. Um, these are the wineries that are in uh, St. Charles County in your wine district area. Uh, Wine Country Gardens, Yellow Farmhouse Winery, Sugar Creek Winery, Montel, Nobilis, Augusta, Mount Pleasant, and Balducci Wines. Those are all shown uh, on this uh, aerial. With respect to um, these operations, um, the Defiance Ridge um, and uh, Augusta Winery both have restaurants. Um, uh, Sugar Creek Winery, has no CUP whatsoever, uh, and uh, Yellow F Farmhouse Winery doesn't have any limitation on its con conduct of weddings, any limitation on hours whatsoever. Augusta Winery has no limitation on their conducting uh, the hours of weddings whatsoever. Um, and uh, the uh, Defiance Ridge Vineyards, they don't post their hours in terms of weddings, so I can't tell you what they're doing. I can tell you in terms of winery hours, the hours we're proposing are similar to what these other operations provide. Looking at the next page, Mont Pleasant Winery, Montel Winery, Nobilis Winery, and Balducci Winery. Uh, all of those operations have restaurants. Mount Pleasant and Montel operate under no permit whatsoever. They have no conditional use permit. Nobilis Winery has no limitation again 
uh, in their permit with respect to wetting uh, operation, and neither does Balducci Winery. There's no limitation in its permit uh, with respect to uh, wetting operations. And then the operation of their um, businesses in terms of the winery, substantially the same uh, as what we are proposing. So these are just some images uh, of some of the uh, events that take place at some other uh, wineries. These are taken from their websites, so they are in the public domain. This is Wine Country Gardens, a wedding event there. This is Yellow Farmhouse Winery, a wedding event there. Uh, this is Sugar Creek Winery, a wedding event there. Uh, this is Augusta Winery, again, a wedding event there. Uh, and Mount Pleasant Winery, another wedding event uh, at that winery, and also Montel Winery, another wedding event, and also Noble East Winery, another wedding event, and Balducci, again, another wedding event. So that's just kind of the way this industry has evolved, uh, that you have restaurants and you have, and you have weddings at these wineries. What we're trying to do at the request of county staff is to straighten our conditional use permits out so that we formalize what we're doing with a winery conditional use permit, weddings, and restaurant, which is what your current ordinance provides, as opposed to what's happening with the rest of the wineries around St. Charles County at this time. Are there any questions? I have a, a question, and what's been proposed by staff, um, this is under the <coughs> conditional use permit permit for building structures, open spaces, conducting weddings. Their third uh, condition is all events, meetings, or functions to be held on premises. All amplified music must end by 10, and all event meetings or functions must end no later than 11. That is different from what you in your presentation were requesting. It is, yes. Things. It is, and we are requesting that if we have an, ev an event during the week, that that be allowed to go to 1045, because that's what we're currently doing. And we're also requesting that on New Year's Eve, we'd be able to go to midnight, because everybody else does that. So that is different than what staff uh, put in their uh, write-up. And so uh, I asked my client, I said, what are your current hours of operation? Don't want to expand it, just want to do what you're doing now. And that's what they told me. Any other questions for the applicants? I have one more, uh, Mr. Goss. Uh, where is the production facilities located at currently? It's in the main building. In, in the yes. basement of the main building? The manager is here, Jeff Ward, so I'm going to have him come up. He's the best person to answer this as opposed to me. Yeah. You need to be sworn in. Yeah. You solemnly declare and affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Jeff Worstall, 7205 Watson's Parish, O'Fallon, uh, 63368. Okay. So my question was, where was the production facility located? All the production facilities is located on the lower level. Um, there is a small kitchen area in the bottom, but three quarters, if not more of that, is done for either warehousing of bottle product and the remaining, call it half of the of the basement, is for fermentation tanks, all the equipment, uh, barrels, all the barrel aging, all that's done on the lower level underneath the main floor. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Your competitors have uh, written some letters that, that claim that wine is not being produced there. Um, you gave us, um, Mr. Goss gave us the um, amount that was produced in 2017. How much was done in 2016? Uh, I don't have that in front of me right now. Similar but it's amounts? Something similar to that. The yields were a lot, were not lot, but they were substantially less just due to the weather. Our vineyard crop uh, didn't yield uh, as, many, as many tonnage as we got in 2017, as which was currently being fermented. We're due to bottle in the next month. And you sold those, you sold those, and you're going to continue to sell the correct. What's the wine that you produce there? Correct. Actually, at the at the at the events. Correct. 2016 yield is currently bottled and on our shelves or in our warehouse, which is on property. The warehouse is 100% on property. Okay. Thank you.
Any other questions from the applicant? No, thank you. Thank you. We'll now open the public hearing for CUP 18-03. Anyone in the public wishing to come and speak regarding this application? Good evening. You solemnly declare and affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. So help me God. Please state your name and uh, address for the record, please. Philip Charles Russell. Yeah, you put your name. <laughs> MPW Inc. 5634 High Street, Augusta, Missouri, 63332. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Um, I'm the president of Mount Pleasant Estates. Um, I would like to... Uh, and I'm sure in the individual wineries would like to correct theirs as well. The presentation erroneously named us as Mount Pleasant Winery. We have not been using that trade name for well over a decade. At our facility, we're called Mount Pleasant Estates. We are located inside the city limits of Augusta. Therefore, we are zoned by those city ordinances as opposed to the county. So, of course, we do not have a CUP. The second thing I'd like to say is that you're going to probably hear from all of the wineries present today um, we don't like each other. For all of us to come together and say something, that's really remarkable. And our basic thing that we're going to tell you is that wineries need to be wineries. I'd also like to present the case very factually that although they claim that they were making and bottling wine since 2006, and if I'm wrong, I would like the record to correct me, they failed to follow, they uh, do not have the federal label approvals that are required to bottle wine in the United States until 2012. We do not really seriously believe that they have any intentions or desires to continue on as a winery. This is why they're trying to remove these CUPs. We don't care that they want to be a wedding. We don't care that they want to be a restaurant, we don't care about any of that. We want to protect wineries. We want to have more wineries producing in the wine district, not less. We lost a producing winery this year. The Yellow Farmhouse Winery is no longer operational. Um, I'm sorry to update your thing there. Um, also, uh, Wine Country Gardens is no longer operational. It has been sold. So. The next thing that I'd like to just basically say is, without taking any more time, let them be zoned commercial. They want to be a restaurant. Let them be what they want to be. Don't stretch all these rules. Don't change all this stuff. Don't harm the wine district. It's a historic district. I've been down there, my family's been down there for 50 years. This is an abomination. Let them be what they want to be. You have zoning ordinances for commercial properties to be restaurants, banquet halls, whatever they want to do, bar mitzvahs, whatever, whatever you're saying. Let them just reapply as that. None of us would, would object to that. So instead of trying to change all these rules and damage all of our history and all of our production and know-how and products and all this other stuff by allowing another 10 people to come in, bring in wine that's been bottled out in California or Oregon, like they have done from the Cuvasan Winery or from Forest Winery in Oregon, and present it as their own and confuse the general population, let them be what they want to be. You have all the codes and the rules and everything like that already established for restaurants and banquet halls. Stop trying to change you know, all the rules. We have wineries that have invested millions of dollars in production equipment, have done great things, brought great prestige to all of us. And when you allow entities like this to stretch and change all the rules, we're not only afraid of what they can do, we're afraid of the next six or seven or eight applications that could come down and all of a sudden there's no wine being made down in here because they don't want to fork over the million or $2 million to build a grape processing factory. And finally, you know, I really want to stress to you the history, the winemaking, and everything that has gone down in that district for, you know, 150 plus odd years. 
And if you think about that for a moment, and your desire to change all these ordinances, and the effect that that's going to have on all of this history, think about that. So please, let them be what they want to be. Zone them the way that they should be zoned. Let them pay the commercial property tax rates. Let them buy wine from wholesalers as opposed to this strange bond to bond getting around the three tier system. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Good evening. Please. You solemnly declare and affirm that you tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Tony Cumjan, 5601 High Street, Augusta, Missouri. Go ahead, Tony. Um, I wasn't going to say very much. In fact, I was going to keep it very short, but there's been a lot of falsehoods. You've been given a lot of falsehoods. I don't want to say lies. Um, the presentation was full of falsehoods, and, and I presume that was under uh, oath. I can, I can say this because I was defamed. My company was defamed because of sir, the comments sir, the gentleman made. Speak to us. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, like I say, I was only going to say a couple things. But um, number one, uh, all we want is for wineries that are operating in the agricultural district of St. Charles County to actually be wineries, okay? Uh, let me put this in perspective. 200 gallons of wine, we sell 200 gallons of wine in an afternoon. So what do we do for the other 364 days? 200 gallons of wine is nothing. I mean, there's amateur winemakers that make more than 200 gallons of wine. That is not a winery. It's not a winery at all. Um, so they shouldn't be classified as a winery. They shouldn't be uh, allowed to operate in the agricultural district. When these uh, uh, regulations were first implemented, the concept was these businesses are operating in the agricultural district. There has to be a connection with agriculture. That connection was the grapes. Uh, for, for all the other wineries in the, in the county, we have our own vineyards. We harvest the grapes. We process the grapes. We make it into wine and we sell the wine. And that's the way it should be. Now, you're, you've been told about the uh, new winery re regulations, so-called new winery regulations. That happened two years ago. And those regulations were requested by Chandler Hill Winery. And allegedly, they requested those changes because the county said that they couldn't comply with the existing standards. And at that meeting, it was a county council meeting, 35 wine growers and wineries came to that meeting. Everybody voiced their objection to, to this travesty, and we were overruled. Uh, you know, I want to point out some of the falsehoods. I own Montel Winery. I, under, I operate under a conditional use permit. I am required to uh, produce wine made from 75% St. Charles County grapes. I don't do that. I produce 95% of my wine from St. Charles County grapes. And I'm proud of the fact that I can do that because I think the quality of these grapes are superior. And I think my customers realize that and they know the integrity that we have in our business. Uh, Augusta Winery, on that chart, uh, they said that we have a restaurant. We don't have a restaurant. There's no restaurant at Augusta Winery. And we don't have wedding events. Um, 
and we don't have to on, operate under a conditional use permit because we're within the city limits of Augusta. So a lot of the information that you are given is false. And I think the, the record needs to be straightened out. Um, uh, and, and there was a lot of other things that I can't, you know, I mean, that I can't really recall at this point. Uh, but even uh, Mr. Myers said that uh, Mont Montel does not have a conditional use permit. That's untrue. You should know that. I, I should talk to you, I'm sorry. <laughs> But I'm a little bit upset right now because when somebody defames me and the business that I've created, I've been in business making wine in St. Charles County for 38 years. And every single year I produce wine from St. Charles County wine. And we're proud of it. And if you read the letter that I wrote, uh, sent, uh, you know, federal, uh, House Resolution 766, they made special attention that the first viticultural area in the United States was in St. Charles County, Southwest St. Charles County. That's pretty neat. That's, you know, I mean, that's a, a jewel in the crown of St. Charles County. And, and we shouldn't defame it. And I can prove everything that I've said. I would, I would happily send you all my conditional use permit from Montel Winery. Um, but I think the main point, the heart of this, uh, this meeting is that what Chandler Hill is asking for right now is has nothing to do what which what was originally requested in 2006. Excuse me, I've been out in the sun all day long. Uh, in 2006, they wanted to be a real winery and they wanted to harvest grapes from St. Charles County. They wanted to make wine. They, that was their intention. They wanted to do all that. And there was a public hearing. They're surrounded by single family residences, you know. And those people showed up at the meeting, I was there, and they were all opposed to it. It was still approved. At that time, there was no mention of a restaurant, there was no mention of a, a wedding venue. This is all new. This is completely different. Uh, than what was originally requested. And, and so, you know, I mean, I think that everybody, the, the people that live in that area, the winemakers, everybody should get a chance at a public hearing to speak out against this new uh, request. Because it's completely different than the request in 2006. Excuse me. Um, I, I go along with Chuck. I think I have nothing against a restaurant in St. Charles County in the Ag District, if that's what you people think is appropriate. I have no problem with a, a, a wedding venue in St. Charles County, if that's what you think is appropriate. But. What I don't like is using the guise of a winery to get a permit to serve alcohol when that's not what you do. And, and, and that's the thing, you know, I mean, just like Chuck said, if they want to operate those businesses, fine, let them operate them. But don't call themselves a winery because they are not. And I'd, I'd be happy to answer questions. Any questions? Um, why are they not a winery? Can you speak to that? From what? your perspective, why do you say they're not a winery? Well, because it's a, it's a, a tight industry, okay? And everybody knows where the grapes are coming from and where they're going. And everybody knows the winemakers or the absence of winemakers. And just the very fact 
that they didn't have a federally approved wine label for the first three years of existence tells me that they, they didn't produce wine. And, and I can tell you, I've had talks with, uh, with uh, building, and they've told me we're having a hard time bringing Chandler Hill into compliance. And that's why we're doing these things. I have no physical proof of that other than the, uh, the, the wine uh, label issue. So if they got the federal sticker you're talking about, they, you, would, right. you would approve of them then? So when, when we, um, we have to have uh, an approved label right, in order to produce a bottle of wine, put that, put that wine out to the public, OK? Um, what, what Chuck Russell just stated was is they didn't have one from 2006 to 2009. So, so if they, they didn't have, have an approved label, either they were doing it illegally. So we're talking about 2006 to 2009 only then? Is that what we're talking about? That's, that's and, all and we can prove. And they currently have one now? Sir. So Tony, they, do you know if they have one now? I, I okay. don't know. We'll ask them when they come and back. And I didn't, I didn't investigate it. OK, um, we'll ask them when they come back up. And if that's important to you, we want to know. We do. And the other thing is, how much wine do they have to make for you to be considered a winery, too? I mean, you guys have opinions about these, no doubt. And each winery does a little something different, I'm assuming. Well, you know, my out. feeling would be that everything they sell at the winery should be what they made on the property. Okay. And you but, don't, but you don't do that. Yeah, I do. I said 95% I, uh, mm -hmm. of the wine that I sell on my property is made from St. Charles County grapes. Okay. The other 5% is made from Missouri grapes. Okay. 100% of the wine that I sell at Montel, mm -hmm. I produce, I harvest, I crush, I bottle, I okay. label, I do everything. I'm not saying that everybody has to do exactly what I do. Right. But I mean... There's got to be some semblance. I mean, the question is asked, what is the winery? Well, people laugh at you. When I, when I ask that question, I said, what's a winery? And they laugh at me, you know. Well, a winery makes wine, right? Pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. Do they produce one hundredth of what they sell and, and still call themselves the winery? 200 gallons is nothing, guys. You know, in my old neighborhood, the, the old uh, Dagos used to produce it down in the basement, and, and they had more than four barrels. They had more than 200 gallons. I should know. I tasted it. <laughs> Are you saying that they're not in compliance right now? I can't prove that. I can't prove that. But... Why were all of these changes made by the county if they were in compliance? Why would they want to change it from what they had to 200 gallons if they were in compliance? Why would they do that? And, and all the other wineries, you know, there was a list of them. Half of them aren't really wineries. Um, uh, the uh, nursery, um, I can't think of the name of it right now, but in Defiance, that's not even a winery. That's a nursery that sells booze, you know? And um, all the other ones have conditional use permits. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else want to come forward? Well, you can you can fill one out on your way. You solemnly declare and affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I will. 
Please state your name and address for the record, please. Rick Balducci, 6601 South Highway 94, Augusta, Missouri. Go ahead, Rick. Okay. Um, first of all, it's not easy being a winery. Uh, we opened in 2001. Uh, it's very expensive plant uh, equipment, winemaker, vineyards, et cetera. Our intention when we got our conditional use permit was to make wine right away, I'm, all our wine. Didn't work out. I didn't have a big bank loan. I had very little money. Took a few years to do it, but I did it. It's not easy, but I did it. My son's a winemaker. We invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in equipment and made space to make wine. Sugar Creek started the same way. They wanted to make wine right off the bat. It was, it's difficult. It took them a few years to do it, but they do it. They make every drop of wine. We make every drop of wine. So that's, that's, that's the first thing I want to point out. So I know the game. And Chandler Hill has never really wanted to be a winery in, in my perspective. Um, it's a beautiful place. Uh, I have nothing against the place other than the fact that 200 gallons really is nothing. And, and how that happened, I don't know. But it's really, that's something that needs to be looked at and really changed. If, if you, I think if you're going to control anybody else coming out to the county, wanting to do the same thing. 200 gallons and, and some of these, and five, five acres of grapes does not constitute a winery. Um, a winery should make at least half their wine and, and really all their wine in St. Charles County. We use all, again, we use all St. Charles County grapes except maybe 5%. Um, and, and most of the grapes come from our vineyards. So I just, I just wanted to state the fact that also there are state records that you can delve into that say how much wine uh, each winery makes. We have to report all this. So there's records uh, that could be looked at and checked out to actually see how much wine is made. So uh, that, that's pretty much all I'd like to say. Um, I just feel like all the other wineries that are really wineries really know that Chandler Hill is not a winery, has no desire to be a winery, and if so, then they really need to maybe be uh, rezoned and pay the, the, uh, the uh, commercial rate rather than get by with pay, paying the ag rate and call themselves a winery when they're not. So that's all I have to say. Okay. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to speak? If not, we will close the public hearing and ask the applicant to uh, come back. And Mr. Chairman, I would like to put into the record one other exhibit, if I could, before okay. you close the hearing. Uh, that would be ordinance number 13-065, uh, which would be the ordinance of Balducci Winery um, that eliminated Balducci Winery's requirement that 75% of all wines and juices must be produced on the premises and 50% of all juices and wines offered must come from grapes grown in St. Charles County and all juices and wines must be bottled on the premises uh, and just says that their winery will meet the Unified Development Ordinance requirements, which is exactly what my client is asking for. We're asking to be treated like this. I'd like to introduce that into the record if I could. Give it to uh, Ms. Weiss. Any questions for the applicant? Mr. Uh, Mr. Goss, uh, how many gallons of wine were produced in 2017 by Chandler Hill? I think we put that uh, slide up. You mean total gallons of wine? I yeah. don't know that number. I, I have the, I put on in the presentation the uh, gallons of wine that were produced uh, from uh, St. Charles County grapes. Uh, which I can take you back to if this is working. In the future, these would be easier if you'd number the pages. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
That's it. Yeah, our 2017 production was um, 1,500 gallons of Vignol, uh, which is 7,500 bottles, uh, 600 gallons of Norton, which is 3,000 bottles, and 1,600 gallons of Chamberson, uh, which came from uh, Mary Whalen in St. Charles County, and that was 8,000 bottles. The uh, Norton came from Herman Hoff a Winery in St. Charles County. And how much was uh, sold at Chandler Hill, uh, too? I mean, I'm assuming all that was sold, so. I have no have idea. idea. Yeah. Okay. I have no idea. I, what, what I do know is that uh, you have a definition of a winery. Yeah. I'm just uh, curious. Which is the 200 gallon, you need to produce at least 200 gallons. Chandler Hill is going to produce far more than 200 gallons of wine. And, and really, um, Jeff is the best person to ask in terms of production questions as opposed to me. I mean, he knows the history. Your question about the licenses, do they have all the labels and licenses? Yes, they do. Okay. They have every federal license they're required to have, every state license they're required to have. Um, I don't know whether what was said is accurate or not in terms of the startup. It wouldn't surprise me if there was a startup period because what I understand about you know, starting a vineyard is you have to start growing the grapes. And so you have to start growing the vines. And so your first crop that you produce isn't going to be your first year of operation. So it wouldn't surprise me if it wasn't 2009 when that became relevant. Yeah. But I don't know the answer to that. I do know that the answer is today, as it has been since they've been doing the, producing wine, that they meet all the state, federal, uh, requirements. Thank you. Uh, it was stated, I believe, I hope I didn't uh, hear this incorrectly, but that Chandler Hill was the one that, that came and requested the change in definition for a winery. Is that correct? Do you know, well, I have absolutely no earthly idea. Okay. All, all I know is that this is the requirement. Let's ask the staff. This is the requirement that the oh. county he has may, today, may and we simply want to operate okay. by okay. your Here's current county oh. ordinance. How did we get that in there? Uh, Vintage, I, I, before the meeting, I just went on your website, um, and you sell some Channel Hill uh, wine, but I think it's like produced three or four years ago, nothing recent. Um, you also are promoting... I was actually on that website, and it wasn't working, Gary. I couldn't get the current sales oh, I, I got it. I printed it And now. I do have a current sales list, if you would like it, that has the current production. And Jeff can talk about the current production. Well, if I wanted to buy wine on your website, it showed... Uh, four different vintages, and they were like four or five years old. So, unless you've changed that since I looked at it. The other thing, you're, um, looks like you're promoting another uh, private label, uh, which was mentioned from Napa Valley, uh, California. Uh, it doesn't have the Chandler Hill, um, uh, I guess, labeling process, but it seems like from your website, and I think you mentioned also possibly getting wines from Europe or something else. Um, going back to the, the arguments with some of the other definitions of winery here, what percentage, um, and it's probably a public record or something, what, what percentage of Missouri wine versus wine from other areas does um, Channel Hill sell or produce or sell or bottle and bring it in and sell? That's the problem. I don't know, but I know that's not a requirement of your conditional use permit. Yeah. And if that's the standard I'm being held to, then you're holding me to a standard which is not in your conditional use permit standards. Well, I was going back to what was written in here, which I... That's not even of. written in the old 2006 ordinance. Yeah, but it was... <clears throat> the comp When this was, which was handed to us, the, if the Planning and Zoning Commission determines that the requested condition amendments are not consistent in the purpose and content with the nature of the proposal as it, was, as it was originally advertised in the public hearing, and that was back in 2006, I realize there's other conditions, but the intent there was different than what it is today. I think the intent was to operate a winery the way all others have operated wineries. And why I went through what all the other wineries are doing, which is holding wedding events, 
having restaurants. That's what your wineries have become. What we are trying to do is to conform to your current ordinance requirements. No one else is doing that. We think they should. We think that the county should request all of them to come in and get those permits. What we're doing is conforming to your current requirements. That's what we have to operate under. If you want to change those requirements, if the county council wants to change it to something else, then we would have to conform to that if we wanted to be a winery. But as I stand here today, what I'm telling you is we comply with your current requirements. One of, one of the other gentlemen asked uh, condition number three, which was recommended by staff. Um, they recommended uh, amplified sound ending by 10 um, and no later than 11 p.m. Is that something agreeable? You said it was 1045, but is 10 agreeable with you or not? As, the, as it was recommended by staff. Uh, most of the weddings we, uh, we end by 11 o'clock, so we, we cut off all, all uh, uh, DJ music and any of that by 1045. Okay, so you wouldn't like that as a re recommendation, I'd you wouldn't like at, that one at 10 o'clock? 100 may, may cut early, but, but uh, most of them go to 11 o'clock. They start at 6, 630 and 80% uh, of them, the, the DJ is inside, and we keep the doors as closed as, as much as we can. Okay, so what staff recommended instead of uh, 10, you would want that modified to 1045? 1045. 1045. And, and no, they have no later than 11. Yeah, if the wedding is completely finished by 11 o'clock. By 11. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> It seems like um, a lot of the gentlemen that came up and talked tonight about their, uh, the, 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 who've been in business for a, a long time, sure. uh, invested a lot of money in, obviously, in the equipment that they needed to, to make their wine. But do the new requirements by the county, um, you save any money on equipment by having to make less on your premises? We still have the same, we have, they may have more barrels, they may have more fermentation tanks. I can't speak to that, but we still have all that equipment. Uh, we harvest, we everything from bud break all the way through harvest. We distem, we press, ferment, bottle, all that that's required under every, every other winery, we, we do the same thing. So whether they produce more or less than us, I can't really speak to that, but we're still um, adhering to the at least 200 gallons. I mean, that's, we're, we're doing close to 4,000 gallons a year on, on what we're getting from St. Charles County grapes and what we're getting on our own property. So there may be bigger volume production operations, but it's the same equipment. We don't get a break in terms of that. Okay. Bottles, perhaps, corks, perhaps, fermentation tanks, perhaps, but I can't speak to what they have on, on their physical plant. <clears throat> They may get a break in terms of volume buying of bottles and corks. I don't know, because they're a bigger producer. I know it works that way in the home building business, but I haven't a clue Roger. if it works that way in the Roger. wine making business. Okay, question. Okay. Mr. Yes. Um, when you were looking at this and, and, and preparing for tonight, did you consider the agro what are they called? Uh, Agritourism. AT district. Right. Agricultural tourism. tourism. I mean. Yes. You're over the 40 acres, you're 41, so you qualify for that. So we went into the decision not to, not to apply for um, the AT district. You don't permit weddings in the AT district? Well, that's a good reason. That's a good reason. We think that was an oversight, but that's why we didn't do it. Okay. Councilman Brazel mentioned to me, I looked at it. Uh, and I, we need to make that change. I mean, nobody's made use of that. And that's district, probably and that's, why, because weddings are... As you saw from those pictures, it's a pretty integral part of winemaking um, <coughs> winery operations these days. They needed to augment their revenue source. Yep. Um, when we, we have approved other wedding venues, and, and I guess this isn't really a question for you, but I'll save it for when we start talking amongst ourselves. Thank you. Any other questions with the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> we'll bring this back to the council. 
Questions of staff, discussion? What, if I could, um, the, uh, one of the issues I'm, I'm, I try to, I think one of our, our, of our things that we need to work on is, is having a level and play, a level playing field, same rules. Um, <coughs> we made a big deal out of telling wedding venues what hours of operation they, they need to have. Um, the recommendations from staff is that mirroring those same recommendations that we told that slew of new applicants that wanted to be wedding venues? No, our, our recommendations on um, conditions for time for honestly all of these wedding events or wineries or whatever has pretty much reflected what they've represented that they how they wanted to operate. The idea there was. Why is the 45 minute change then from what they want to do versus what, what your recommendations are? I think we must have misunderstood what time they wanted to, to what, what time they wanted to end. Okay. The staff doesn't have heartburn over 45 minutes uh, difference on no, amplified music? No, not necessarily. Um, we just thought it would be better to be explicit so that neighbors could have some input about what time and maybe the conditions would be different at different locations because of proximity to residences. Um, the other thing is we thought it would be better that someone didn't come in and say verbally at the meeting, oh, we're going to, we promise we're going to end all of them at 9 p.m. and if there's no condition to that effect, then we would not have any way to enforce it. Okay. Uh, one other thing then, do, do we need a conditional use permit to, uh, to discharge fireworks in the um, in the in the area, would we don't really talk about fireworks here? I know that that Chandler Hill does that. Um, so where are we at on the whole fireworks issue? My understanding is we uh, the county has a fireworks permit that someone needs to take out each time they do a, a show, a fireworks show. Are you guys doing a, correct. do you guys do that now? Yep. Yeah, it's a day-by-day -day permit. Like, yep. That's why I didn't put in the application. Okay. So we do do that. Okay, great. Thank you. Was, uh, do you know what the logic was in changing the definition of a winery? You're assuming I can, I can talk to, I can speak to part of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I will say there was input from different, um, different people and different, different groups. The county staff had certain thinking, uh, wineries had certain thinking, council members had thinking, and so the, the result here um, may have been a blending of, of, of different people's thoughts. But I would say the part about the 200 gallons, I remember talking about that with uh, planning zone, with, with the community development director, <coughs> and our discussion was that it wasn't intended to um, necessarily be a a bottom threshold for wineries, it was really intended so that it would protect hobbyists. So if someone had a, let's just say someone lived out in an agriculture area and they made a few gallons of wine for themselves uh, and their, their family, <coughs> 100 gallons a year, whatever. We didn't, someone, we didn't want the county necessarily coming back and saying, oh, you've got to have a conditional use permit uh, to do the hobbyist uh, winemaking. Uh, the 200 gallons, as I understand it, <clears throat> that's the trigger to get a federal permit. If you produce more than 200 gallons a year, you have to get a federal permit. So we thought it'd be a nice uh, dovetail. Also in researching the, um, let me find it here. Under the definition of winery, all wine produced in a winery must be produced under a state of Missouri domestic winery license. In researching that license, my recollection is at that time, a couple years ago, it required that a certain percentage of grapes um, come from the state of Missouri. So that actually, the state of Missouri's license, as I understand it, has a requirement that a certain percentage of grapes come from within the state. So does the, our current definition require that same thing? Our current <coughs> definition requires that all wine produced at the winery must be produced under a state of Missouri domestic winery license. Okay and at least 50% of the grapes used in the wine produced on site must be grown within St. Charles County. And I remember there was a lot of input from wineries um, at public meetings wanting to keep that 50% requirement or to 
impose that 50% requirement. Ardita, is there any um, is there any way that we can regulate the use of the word winery anyway? If I'm a restaurant and I just want to be, and I want to call my restaurant Mike's Winery, um, and and operate in the in this area, is <coughs> do we uh, county government have anything to say about that? Uh, not really. Okay. You can basically operate. Because I understand place. from what creating this tourism area. <coughs> As a, as a tourist coming to the area and, and calling it a winery, it, it gets confusing whether or not we regulate it as a winery and, and, and we deem it a winery. You can just paint winery on your sign and, and you're good to go. Yes, you probably right. have to file a fictitious name with Secretary of State, but yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Wine Country Gardens actually they didn't have a conditional use permit for a winery. They had a conditional use permit for a farm stand and a garden center and a restaurant, and they operated as Wine Country Gardens. Now what's interesting is the new owners of that operation, you, you will remember probably a few months ago, came to us and got a conditional use permit to uh, be a winery on that property. Right, thank you. Any other questions? What happens if this gets denied? Well, which part of it? Are you talking about the, the, the changing of the conditions or the, 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 the two conditional uses? So are we could be voting on three things here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what's number one that we vote on? Well, it depends on the, let's see, I'm gonna have to have extra. <coughs> Depends on the motion. So the chair, okay. unless there's any other discussion or questions, the chair would entertain a motion. So, yeah, I think the question though, would, uh, he was asking what what are the what are the things we are voting on? What is it? Well, so it, well if we to? if they're if they're trying to get the the two conditions deleted from the rules, <clears throat> number was it four and five? Four and five. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> Why would we vote on that if that's already been deleted in the in the you know by the county? Because their conditional use permit still for this particular that. conditional use permit it has to yeah. okay. Right. So so the way the staff recommendation is presented, the first request is for a restaurant. The right. second request is for building structures, open spaces for conducting weddings and other private parties, and then the third consideration is the amendment of the current conditional use permit. Uh, conditional use permit. Okay. So. Someone can make a motion that we approve <coughs> as a whole, or we can vote separately. Council, how would you recommend vote separately? Separately. Chairman, if you'd read the first one again, let's just get real clear what we're voting on then, okay. if we're gonna vote it separately. The first uh, presentation by staff is a conditional use permit for a restaurant. Uh, site plan must be approved by the Community uh, Development Department prior to any modification to the site. Site must meet all Community Health and Environment Department regulations. Uh, number three, for all events, meetings, or functions to be held on the premises, all amplified sound must end by 10 p.m. and all events, meetings, or functions must end no later than 11 p.m. That could be subject to amendment by whoever makes the motions. Uh, the restaurant and event <coughs> uh, venues may operate between the hours of 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Sunday. And number five, all parking must occur in the designated parking sites, uh, parking areas on site. So if that's number one and we make a motion and, and the applicant wanted to change the um, uh, amplified the sound from 10 to 1045. <coughs> uh, and also add the exception for New Year's Eve. And New Year's Eve, okay. I'll make them up. And I'll, sec I'll, make, I'll make a motion. Yeah. Make a motion with the uh, changing of the times to accommodate the current uh, schedule with the 10:45 and okay. and exception on New Year's. Exception Day. on New Year's. Okay, so uh, those are the only two. So condition number three would be all events, meetings, or functions to be held those on the premises. Really all amplified sound must end by 10:45 p.m. <coughs> Uh, and all events, uh, meetings, and functions must end no later than 11 p.m. 
Is that your motion, Mr. Klinghammer? Yes, it is. Thank you. Second, Mr. What Griffin. About, yes. Uh, huh? New Year's Eve. Oh, uh, and New Year's uh, Eve. Uh, uh, and New with Year's the Eve. exception of New Year's Eve at 12 a.m. I'm sorry. Was that your motion? It is. Thank you. Your second, Mr. Griffin. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. One, two. Mr. Sidley's not here. Mr. Uh, McDonald, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Coon. Yes. Mr. Fromm. Yes. Mr. Leonard. Yes. Mr. Clary? Yes. I vote yes. Mr. McBride? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. Klinghammer? Yes. Okay. That passes. Now we're going to get another sheet. Okay. Second thing to consider is for the conditional use permit for building structures or open spaces for conducting weddings and or wedding receptions or other private parties. First condition B, a site plan must be approved by the Community Development Department prior to any modifications to the site. Number two, the site must meet all Community Health and Environment Department regulations. Number three, all for all events, meetings, or functions to be held on the premise, all amplified sound must end by 10 p.m. and all events, meetings, or functions must end no later than 11 p.m. PM and all parking must be in designated parking areas on site. Chair will entertain a motion. Move we. That would, my understanding would be that on um, condition three would be 1045 again. We would amend it. That would be your yes, motion. Yes, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay. So uh, condition three would be all events, meetings, functions, tell on premises, all amplified sound must end by 1045 p.m. And all events, meetings, or functions must end no later than 11 p.m. with the exception of New Year's Eve. And that ending time is 12 a.m. That's your motion, Mr. That's, Clary? That's my motion. Your second, Mr. Fromm? What? Mr. Klinghammer. Mr. Yep. Klinghammer? Yes, second, please. Okay. To Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. McBride? Yes. I vote yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Mr. Clary? Yes. Mr. Leonard? Yes. Mr. Coon? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Klinghammer? Yes. Okay. Now the third thing to consider is to amend conditional use permit C667 uh, for the <coughs> Channel Hill Winery. Uh, and that recommendation is to strike condition uh, four, which states 75% of the wine for sale on site must be produced from grapes either grown on the premises or grown on an area not less than five acres in size within St. Charles County. And condition number five, in any winemaking year, the quantity of wine consumed by or delivered to consumers in the winery shall not exceed two times the quantity of wine currently under production in the winery. And then in number seven, uh, section uh, uh, 405.435 exhibit A subsection two be replaced with section 405.435 uh, section F table one. I, I was under the understanding that six and seven they were all they were okay with. That was mm, my understanding. Right. Also. Well, six is six, if you look at number seven that uh, the, the in the county ordinances that's changed. It's changed. Yeah. See I where see. the see where the track through is yes. on section four hundred five. Yeah. Okay. It's just replacing the new section number. Mr. <clears throat> Chairman, I think you I think you want to add to that. Uh, motion that we will comply with the current definition oh, oh. of a winery because that'll pick up all that other stuff. Yeah. And I don't know what that section is, but that was staff's recommendation. We certainly agree with it. We're not trying to do something different than that. So I don't have that. Do you have that language, Mr. Myers? It's in that Balducci. Uh, ordinance. If right, in ordinance number 13-065, the language that was used was the use of the site as a winery shall meet all unified development ordinance requirements. So under bet, I'm reading from um, 405-435-F um, on table one as um, agricultural. Uh, it's regarding the buffer and it's not required. I see no requirements for a buffer, if I'm reading that correctly. We're leaving that in. That staff asked it be left in. We have no problem leaving it in. 
while we're at what we're suggesting you need to add, you need to correct that one code section, which you did, and then you need to add the statement that we will comply with the UDO requirements for a winery, the current requirements of the definition of a winery. Yeah. I think that's what we need. Yeah. So we'd be eliminating condition four, five, amending seven, and adding that, um, uh, that the operation will comply with all the requirements of the Unified Development Ordinance. So moved as presently stated. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I I guess from my perspective, uh, what they're they're requiring or what they're requesting, uh, regardless of how the d definition is made, would comply with uh, what is currently uh, suggested as that. So. It would be my thought that it makes sense to go forward with it. <clears throat> Mr. McBride, how do you vote? Yes. I vote yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Mr. Cleary? Yes. Mr. Leonard? Yes. Mr. Coon? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Klinghammer? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Okay. I would also like just to add, I think, going back to Mike, with uh, was brought up tonight with uh, at the county council level to uh, probably review um, what is a winery. Right. Yeah. Um, I think that's and I think that's very important as we right. keep growing and expanding. So it's gonna go in your lap um, and with your other colleagues to uh, see what we do in the future. I, I agree. I, I do too. I think that uh, it makes more sense for right. that to be uh, defined. teased out and right. defined exactly what these things are, the standards are. And can they be policed? Can they be checked up on? You know, mm -hmm. this is all. That's a real good point. You can make all the rules in the world, and right. if you don't have a mechanism for for checking it, and how do you go in and, and really audit where where they're getting their grapes from, um, and you know how much they're they're actually making? I mean, that's um, there's a certain amount of, of uh, compliance that just has to be uh, because it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Don't they have to have documentation, though, on what they bring in and what they sell? To a federal government. I mean, you would have to have that for legal we don't have control. A method. We don't have a method, though, for requiring it or, or actually who do you give it to, who checks it, um, unless it's complaint-driven. Well, well, again, I, I just hope it opens up discussion. I think it's something you know, very yep. important, uh, yeah. Yeah. especially for St. Charles County. And again, what I said before, I'd rather have people spending money here in St. Charles County than going out uh, uh, to Herman, for example. Um, I think this is the premier place of the St. Louis area in St. Louis County for um, people to enjoy good wine. It is, and, and I, no matter what rules that we have, and I used my silly little example of Mike's Winery, it's still, the, the tourists are, are still subject to um, and you know, we don't have something, we don't have anything that has a seal on it that really says that this is a, a winery that makes its own wine. You, you, you could, anybody can call themselves a winery. I have Gary's Winery and I only make 199 <laughs> gallons. <laughs> I've sampled some of yours. <laughs> I know. Okay. Uh, next on our agenda is a rezoning and conditional use permit request 18-01 located at uh, 903 Mother's Head Road. The owner is George P. DeBoer. The applicant is Scott Sacco. Yes. Current zoning is R1B, single family residential district. Requested zoning is C2, general commercial district. Use requested, self storage or mini warehouses, a single family residence and an automobile, boat, truck and recreational vehicle storage. The area is 3.16 acres. The location is on the northwest corner of the intersection of uh, Westwood Drive and Mother, Motherhead Road near the cities of Cottleville and Weldon Springs. This is located in Council District 3. Staff. This uh, request involves two, has two aspects. First is a rezoning and then second is a conditional use permit. So. My suggestion would be to first look at the rezoning and ask, is this the right place for commercial zoning? And then the second question would be, if it is the right place for commercial zoning, 
is this the right place for this particular use with the, with the outdoor storage and the mini warehouses? So I, I think there's two considerations. They, um, I would suggest doing those in two different motions because one is a legislative act, the rezoning, and the other, the conditional use permit, is, is the way I understand it, an administrative act and is, is treated differently. Uh, again, this is about three acres. It's located in the northwest corner of Motherhead Road and Westwood Drive. The property currently has, and if I get any of this, this wrong, the applicant, I'm sure, will help me out, but it, it has two homes and a barn. It's about three acres. And um, three acres or 33? Three. 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 Yeah, a little over three acres. Some of the factors affecting this property, one is that Motherhead Road has been straightened somewhat in the last couple of years because the idea has been to extend Motherhead Road across Westwood and down to Highway 94. Actually, in the capital improvements program in 2016, I think it was 2016 or 2017, St. Charles County approved formally that extension down to Highway 94. Obviously, Highway 94, that's a state route, and so that would take MoDOT approval. Um, St. Charles County's intention had been to extend Motherhead Road, but unfortunately we're hearing recently, uh, after the application was made, that it's looking like uh, very unlikely that MoDOT would permit uh, Motherhead Road to be extended to and connect with Highway 94, even as w what they call a right in and right out situation. So I would say that part of the thinking in terms of the viability of the site for commercial, I think that uh, that is looking very um, unlikely at this point. There are a couple of other considerations you might want to, to, uh, to consider as well. First, just as a residential property, this property has difficulty with, uh, with sewage. And what I mean by that is it has a septic tank currently and as I understand it, the septic tank is failing, so it needs to be connected to, uh, to um, some sort of a public system. The Sanitary Sewage District will allow the extension of only one residential sewage connection. And the reason they say that is because it's, it's a, a, a group system that's uh, low pressure. Um, so because of that, we're really talking about a limited sewage capacity for this property, unless it's really made over into something much um, more extensive and it enabled to finance the, the uh, installation of a, of, a, of a traditional sewer pipe and connect it with, with uh, sewage down the road. That's a pretty expensive proposition. The other thing I'm hearing is that this property has had fill over the years, and so that may affect some of the ability to build on the property. It doesn't eliminate the possibility of building on the property, but I think it's, uh, any development had to take that in, in consideration. Uh, for instance, it may require special footings for buildings. I think that's one of the reasons that the applicant is looking toward using this as more of an open space use, the outdoor storage of these recreational <laughs> vehicles, with the addition eventually of the, the, the storage buildings. The master plan recommends on the north side of Westwood, residential. And it did not take into account the possibility of extension of Motherhead Road in 2013 when the management plan was updated. But I would say that there's kind of a line in the sand so that on the north side of Westwood is, is shown as residential and the south side is, is commercial. And one rationale for altering from that master plan might be the extension of Motherhead Road, but again, because it's, it's looking unlikely that it will be extended, um, I think that doesn't work in the application's favor. You have in your packet a concept for how the property would be laid out prospectively, would include areas for storage of um, recreational vehicles and other vehicles, I think boats as well. It would involve keeping one or both of the homes up front. And uh, again, it would work within the fact that there's limited sewage capacity for this particular property unless it's really made over in a lot more dense fashion and for commercial fashion. 
County staff looked at this from the, from first from the, the aspect of is this the right place for commercial? And in, in reviewing um, or analyzing uh, the prospects for commercial, because Motherhead Road is not gonna be extended, uh, we're recommending that, um, that the Planning Zoning Commission recommend denial for the rezoning. And because we feel like, if, if you feel like this is not the right place for commercial, it, it doesn't follow that you should proceed then with looking at, a, is this the right place for this commercial usage and or conditional use permit? So we're, we're likewise recommending for denial for the conditional use permit. Any questions for staff? Seeing none, the applicant... Uh, Were there any letters? Yeah, any letters? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah there's several. Let me see. For the record. <coughs> I should have this right in front of me. They're in that new packet on your... It's in yeah, the, the yeah, yeah. Revised packet. You, you always ask for the record. <laughs> yeah, the, the communications received, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight opposition letters. Um, there's a gentleman from the audience that approached me just before the meeting and indicated that he had um, one or more petitions um, against the application. Were there any four? These two or four? Oh, the, the two that we came by last? Okay. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Okay. The applicant will come forward. You solemnly declare and affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Yes, my name is Scott Sacco. That's S-A-C-C-O. And um, my office is at um, uh, 856 Waterbury Falls <laughs> in O'Fallon, Missouri. And um, I also have um, Dale Walterman with uh, Landmark Surveying here, and then also the owner, George DeBure. Uh, and um, so um, what we're proposing, uh, can't really see that real well, um, but what we're proposing is this uh, facility that is going to be covered, we propose to cover RVs, we feel that there's a demand for that, there's a lot of storage, surface storage around town, but nowhere can someone in this zip code have a nice coach and have it enclosed and covered. And as far as um, what Robert was saying, a lot of that was, was correct, and um, you know, I can address the, the comprehensive land use plan. Uh, there are some inconsistencies in that comprehensive land use plan. Um, I don't know if we can go back to the original plan, but basically the comprehensive land use plan shows everything on the north side is low density residential, but however, a property right across the street, which was the old Skate Galaxy, was recently purchased and they're renovating it and putting in, um, just added a door to it, and that's commercially zoned already. The comprehensive land use plan didn't show that being commercial. That is commercial, the property behind it is commercial, the little office building in front is, is also C2, and adjacent court where their office buildings are, and adjacent uh, court on the backside that is uh, more industrial type use, more larger industrial type buildings. Um, so the comprehensive land use plan didn't indicate that. If you can get a wider show, is that possible to get a wider? Um, I've got it here if we need it. But can I can I Light switch this over? I, just, yeah. I don't know if that's going to do it. Is it upside down? <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so this property right there is the property I'm talking about, this uh, Skate Galaxy and Jason Court. Uh, the comprehensive land use plan shows all that as low density uh, residential. I mean, the storage facility um, that they have there and also the old Skate Galaxy, they're fixing it up, they're spending some money there. I see no way in the world that that's gonna be going back to a residential, low density residential use. Um, that was not considered. So from staff's point of view, I understand why they have to recommend denial. I understand that. But however, looking at it from the general, from the overall perspective of traffic flow and, um, and uh, accessibility to the property being a corner, the traffic that's already at that property right this location right there, 
there's a CUP and apparently they've got some sort of permit to do some additional work on that property in a commercial zoning. Um, the traffic that they have there, I have on the corner and it's basically twice that. So I got all the traffic to the east of Motherhead Road on Westwood and all the traffic on the west of it plus Motherhead Road. So if any place should be commercial, it should be on the corner, I submit. And um, so, and I've, I've also, um, for this particular property, based on the fact of the sewer situation, very limited, there's one tap available. I'm willing, if I'm <coughs> able to get the zoning, when I get the zoning and the CUP, I will remove the, there's a double wide mobile home on the property. I will remove that property and just have the single, the double, um, the house that is a two story. And I will remove that septic tank that's failing there and I will replace it with sanitary sewer. And so we'll have, uh, that house will have a new roof, new landscaping. I'll improve that community. That whole corner there will look a lot nicer. It'll have sanitary sewer. Uh, that house will have a new roof on it, new landscaping. And the use for the property, I believe, is a great use for it, for that location there. It's very low impact. And um, I think there's a demand for the community for that. Nowhere else in, in 63304 zip code are you going to be able to have a nice, um, you know, class A, class C, um, fifth wheel or nice boat that you can have enclosed. There's just, it's not available for us in this area. I'd like to provide that service for everyone that are interested in it. <clears throat> um, there's other surface storages around. I understand that. What we're trying to do is something a little bit different. We have uh, some surface storage, some self storage, enclosed buildings and that we can enclose uh, and shelter RVs and um, upscaled uh, boats. Can you do, uh, I asked the last meeting, because sitting sure. over here with the, the lighting in here is horrible. Um, can you put your finger on there exactly where you are? Yes, sir. Right there where the white, where the blue dot is. Okay. And the reds are commercial that are? Uh, yes, those are existing commercial. <laughs> existing. And then, uh, so this is existing commercial. Yeah. This is existing commercial in the county. This is commercial, this is the uh, self this is the storage facility there. It's in Weldon Spring, but that's all commercial too. And the comprehensive land use plan shows all that to be commercial down below there, which I, I, I agree. I mean, I think that should, and I have no objections to that. But um, anyway, um, yeah, so um, uh, I did talk, I did speak with the uh, contiguous owners uh, of my property and I've talked with them and Mr. Campbell, Rob Campbell, did say that he was going to send a letter if he didn't send when he said he was going to. And um, uh, he, but he was basically going to say, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to pose it. I'm okay. uh, I wish you luck on it, he said, but I'm not going to pose it. I'm not going to say, yeah, I'm gung ho for it, do it. But he says, I'm not going to pose it. I'm okay with it. And, and so the, all the contiguous owners are, seem to be in favor. Everyone that touches this property has said that, uh, it's, they're, that they're okay with it. And I've got, there's two letters floating around here and Rob Campbell said he was gonna provide one. I'm surprised he didn't, if he hadn't. Um, I have a question, Scott. Yes, please. Uh, <clears throat> with you storing Class A vehicles, what would be the height of your buildings? Uh, 14 foot doors with uh, 16, 16 foot at the eave. And you're going to buy the property and own it? Yes. Are you buy it? Okay. Yes. And um, so, uh, yes, it would. So, what, what is uh, Robert uh, alluded to? Uh, fill dirt? What's the. Uh, uh, is it plastic? So, what kind of dirt is it? Well, um, the owner, George, over many years, I believe 17 years or so, years of ownership, that property was sloping down. It was just very unusable property. And uh, what he has done is over the years had uh, fill dirt come in and uh, fill in lifts, small at a time. And there were tractors, bulldozers that, that have um, utilized that property there for fill. And they've uh, filled it to its current location right now so it's been it's filled at different heights right back behind the barn very little fill but then it, it gets deeper as it goes further to the west um, my brother uh, is a structural engineer at Difficult 
uh, and uh, he and also I have a relative who's a structural engineer. We'll address that. You know, we will address the soils, and but we we believe we can build buildings on that um, that will support structures. Um, it's going to be more expensive to build them, but we believe that we can do it and provide a great service to the community. That's not that's not there right now, and uh, we feel pretty strongly for the use. We feel it's. Uh, it, it's it's appropriate use for the area. Um, so, Scott, that yes, that uh, these are going to be large vehicles that are going to be coming in and out of there, and yes. there's a hairpin turn right there. How do you anticipate that's going to work in terms of traffic? Well, uh, you're talking about on uh, Motherhead Road. Well, yeah, and, well, and you're, there is a somewhat uh, <coughs> blind uh, area coming uh, on both directions from Westwood, and I'm just thinking the size of vehicles you're proposing there, uh, that's fairly close to that uh, hairpin turn and, and well, well, coming in now. I, 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 think I, I think I know what you're getting at there, uh, Kevin. The, that road has been realigned. And I, I think we've got a picture of it, what it looks like now. That no longer looks like that. that no, I know. I've, I've been down there. I know what okay. it is. Okay. And so, so now it, it provides um, easy access for the fire trucks. That's there further to the north. They're in Cottaville. So there's full access there at that interchange. So what I propose, the main entrance would be just to the north of Westwood. Uh, and you would come in and you would have um, 50 or so feet of area to pull off the road to get completely off the road before the gate would then open up and allow the coaches to go in. So we want to create a safe situation that where people, there won't be backing up into the traffic, will be pulling straight through. So we're creating, I think, a, a, a safety um, facility there that, that's going to have safe ingress and egress out. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Klingel. <clears throat> Scott, you keep talking about coaches that are coming in. Um, is it, I mean, I'm looking at the site plan here, so it's, it's going to be a combination of, of, of the large buildings for the RVs, but it's also open storage, or? Yes, it would probably be a combination of some, some open storage, but then also, um, also some smaller storage, smaller units, too. Just the way the lot lays out, it's not, it's, so, no, so it's kind be, of irregular shape. So some of it will be the typical on-wheel storage boats and and campers and whatnot, just out in the weather. Some of the areas would because there's not enough not enough room for uh, buildings to be built there. So yes, I would envision in some areas for that to be the case. But the main the main thrust of it, the main part would be enclosed, you know, covered covered uh, storage is is the main concept, and there will be some of the other. That's um, the 40, that's 40 by 12 um, foot spaces. So there's two buildings, is that right, for covered or one? Uh, well, I would propose. Uh, 50 by 12 and a <coughs> 40 by 12. Perhaps, perhaps more than that. Once we get our final, our final site plan and final, um, uh, we'll review the soils and determine all the, um, you know, where the best locations are for in, in doing the surface and where we do the uh, self-storage facilities, which are lighter than the, um, than the uh, covered storage facilities. Okay. I have a question. Yes, uh, would there only be being one uh, sanitary sewer hookup? Yes. Then what is your plans for any type of uh, waste in the storage area, uh, waste disposal, liquids, uh, those types of, of, of issues with the Class A's <coughs> and your boats, et cetera? Well, we, we wouldn't be offering that. You know, there's no, there wouldn't be a, a dump station there. Um, most, uh, most. You said there will not be a dump station? There will not be. Um, I, I don't. We'll, we'll be putting the, sand, the, the property to a sand, in, on the public sewers, and I don't know that a grinder pump would be able to handle that. I'd love to have uh, a dump station there. <laughs> if we can get a grinder pump that would handle that, we'd like to. For the big coaches that come in when they tramp, when they come in, in from out of town, it'd be nice for them to have that available. Um, so you're saying right now you're not going to have a, 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 even a, a tank that you would have a service come in and, and pump out. You would not be doing that. Not be doing that. If if the if we can get the septic tank, if we can get the a grinder pump that would work, 
and we can, I don't know that there's enough capacity. I, probably that's not gonna happen. Duck Creek probably will not allow it. We're, they're already at capacity. That's why we only have one tap there. That's why a residential subdivision doesn't work there. That's why a shopping center is not gonna work there. It's just too limited on the tap. We got one house. And that's why I'll remove the other house. If I get the zoning, I'll remove the mobile home. I'll put a, uh, remove that septic tank, put it on public sewers, dress up that whole corner there, and we'll you know install a facility there that that, that community is going to um, use. Okay. I have Thank a you. question, Scott. If you're yes. operating this, um, you show two gates. Uh, is there going to be somebody on on site? Uh, for ingress and egress, somebody that comes in, or do they call a certain number and then somebody meets them so they can have access to the property? Right. Uh, no, well, and, we're. And number two, uh, how about lighting and hours of operation? Okay. Uh, as far as the. Um, we're envisioning gates, at least initially, at, or perhaps, um, you know, electronic gates with a keypad. Uh, that's what we're, what we're working on right at the moment. Um, then there would be one way in, which would be on Motherhead Road, which would have the large access so you can pull the coaches in there safely and not stick out on the street while cars are passing by. And go in that way and you could park your vehicle or you could pull straight out again that same way off of Motherhead or exit off of Westwood. So there'd be, it could be one way traffic for ease of getting in and out. How about and hours of operation, and are you going to have uh, lighting? There'd be low lighting that would be aimed down low, but there wouldn't. There would be very limited lighting, um, and also um, the hours of operation will be available for 24 hours, is what I would envision. And no one on site, as far as. Um, yes. Well. George will be on site. We'll have we'll have someone living there. They'll be watching at twenty. You know, all the hours that 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 they're there, they'll be watching over the facility. On site, operating basically. The it's not, we're not going to have an office per se there, where you won't have an office where you have to come in there. We are going to try to do this all you know online and do it all by um, you know pay online. Um, but we will have someone living at the house, and they will be. They'll be the eyes for that facility. We're envisioning also some um, video, also video surveillance, in case there is ever an event that happens there. We'll be able to we'll be able to um, provide security. And when do you, uh, if you, if this gets approved, when do you see uh, you putting um, starting this project from start to finish completion? Well, we would uh, we would plan to get started on it right away, uh, sometime in this early summer, and hopefully have it up and running, you know, by late summer. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, if there's not a whole lot of improvements. We will be, fen you know, gating it, um, and um, and fencing it, and really, you know, trying to dress up the site and make it look real nice. Um, but we'll we'll get started on it as quickly as we can, and and. Uh, it shouldn't it shouldn't take a, a great deal of time to you know construct at least initially I Scott did I understand have... that you said the entire perimeter would be fenced yes well the <clears throat> what we propose is um, on the uh, um, behind the house and behind the barn uh, the fence would go behind it There's no reason for the who's living in the house and for the barn there they have to go and go through the gate so we'll Put the gate behind that, and then once we move the um, that double wide mobile home, that that fence configuration may change just a little bit right there, since that house won't be there, but won't be it shouldn't be substantially different from the fence that's shown there now on the perimeter. Mr. Did, my, my, did I make myself clear? I may not I, have made I, it very clear. I was clear. asking about if there was going to be a fence around the entire perimeter around the entire property. Yes. Okay. But it'll, the fence will be behind. It won't be out in front of the houses. It'll be behind uh, behind yeah. them. Okay, it'll be behind the house, but then it'll be around the the remainder of the property. Yes, gotcha. Okay, thanks. Thanks, sure. I noticed that mm -hmm. you're, there's only one exit, and it's out onto <clears throat> onto Westwood. That's correct. Uh, well, there's an exit there, and then I, I th we propose an exit on Motherhead Road also. So on Motherhead Road, you could come in. 
uh, oh, wow. and you could also come out that way, but that's going to be, you know, you, so you could come in or out that way, or if it's more convenient for the bigger coaches or the fifth wheels, uh, more convenient, they would pull out on the, um, on the Westwood. Okay, if, if uh, I noticed that the storage units that are on the exit out, are those the small storage yes. units with a little garage door where you pull up, and is there enough room to park your car there? And do what you got to do and let somebody go by or we will make sure that there is um yeah we're, we're we will make sure that that we'll have that uh, right now there is a slope on the property so we'll have to put retaining walls or we may have to reduce some of the density of those units okay because there is a slope from the back of the building as you go west it does slope down and so we'd either retain we have to put a retaining wall to get the to get those all those units on there or we would just do one side, perhaps, and still have plenty of room for ingress and egress. Okay. Uh, egress, and not ingress. They wouldn't be coming in on Westwood. Only coming in right. on um, Motherhead. Right. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> okay. Uh, anyone want to speak to the engineer? You have anything else? Um, I, I, I just I, I just think in summary it's a good use for the property. I think based on the sewer capacity, based on the traffic counts, based on a little bit of inconsistency there. So I understand why it was denied, but I think that uh, I think closer examination warrants this to be commercial. Uh, in my 36 years of experience in commercial real estate, I think I think it makes some sense to be there. Um, they have it at that location, but um, if you have any other questions, I'd be glad to answer them. But I think that's pretty much. Well, what, what I have to say about it, I appreciate Parking considering. Parking area, what is that going to be? I'm sorry? Is it going to be gravel, or what's the... Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I, plan, I plan to do that. Uh, that would be a, a staff, uh, uh, you know, uh, we'd, we'd be talking to gravel, talking about gravel, that's what we'd like to do. It'd be probably cost prohibitive to try to pave that area <clears throat> at this point. You know, the, you know, a lot of this will be done. We'll be improving it as we go, and we may start with gravel. We may pave it, but just to do it right out of the box and pave it right from day one without any income coming in, you know, it would sure. be a work in progress. And if, it, if the people are requiring it, then we're absolutely going to do that. I would envision maybe we could do that in the future. I hope, hope we could. Okay. Thank but you. Just, any other you questions know. for the applicant? If not, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <coughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Now we'll open the public hearing for rezoning and CUP CUR 18-01. Anyone that's coming to speak, remember to fill out one of our cards. <coughs> Raise your right hand, sir. You solemnly declare and affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Chris Shoney, 5345 Precious Stone Drive. Um, I oppose this for the very reason that they're going to leave the house and the barn. The uh, runoff that we already have that comes down through my neighbor's property that um, I back up to the lake that is currently next to this where this facility would be. And we already get a ton of water coming down through there. Uh, when it does rain. So they would need to do something with the runoff situation. Um, also, like I said, the house, the barn, the, the whole corner just needs to be demoed and start over. Um, to stick a fence up behind that house and that barn is just going to be a travesty. It's going to be a mess. We already have enough problems on Westwood with the salvage yard uh, that's labeled a used car lot that we're trying to deal with with the, with the county. Um, the traffic there is horrible. My daughter was hit head on at that intersection and uh, told her car 34 days after she got it. It's a dangerous intersection. They've improved it and straightened it some, but it's still a very dangerous intersection. Um, I do store my boat across the street from the, where he's talking, and it's hard to get in and out of there. Uh, there's motor coaches and that in there, and it, it's very hard with Westwood Drive to to, uh, to get in and out. The traffic there is just horrendous, um, and people don't go the speed limit through there. They're running 60 and 70 mile an hour. Um, like I said, I oppose it uh, for those reasons. Um, 
it's just not a good fit for the neighborhood and I'm afraid it's just going to run our property values down even more. So, thank you. Uh, Chris, where does your property uh, <coughs> about this property? Do you touch the property? I don't actually touch it. I'm my pro I'm I'm on Precious Stone Drive with within if you go down Motherhead and you turn onto Precious Stone, Precious Stone loops around and runs parallel with the back of that property. Between my common ground and this property, there is a probably, there's a, a lake, it, the, the thing's gone now. Um, there's a lake that was built two years ago um, and he cut down about 200 trees back there which kind of opened up that whole area. We couldn't see Motherhead Road from our, from our pool in years past. Um, if, if you look at the corner, where, so it says sub, su, where it says subject property, just below that, or just mm -hmm. up from there, there's a new lake there, which you really can't see. And then my property is right behind that. As you go up. As you go up. up. Yeah. So like the very corner, the very back corner of that property would probably be about 150 feet, 200 feet from the back corner of my yard. And you're getting water coming? Up. No, I don't get water in my yard. My yard is much higher, but it's like a waterfall going through there. It's, it's eroding the trees. Um, it's eroding our common ground already. Um, so there's a lot of water that comes down through there. Thank you. It's a very big concern. Um, the common ground is so wet in the summer times that they can't hardly mow it. And, uh, we're, and part of that, I think, is due to the fact that they cut all those trees down and built the lake, which um, I, it was just done. We never saw any kind of meeting about it or anything else. So uh, their property does actually touch that facility. He has a home right behind where this facility would be, uh, the gentleman that built the lake. Okay, anything thank else? Chris, thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> you solemnly declare and affirm that you tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Uh, please state your name and address for the record, please. Doug Anstead, 36 Shady Meadow Court. Okay, go ahead, Doug. Um, I'm here to oppose as well. Uh, my wife and I went through the, the subdivision. We encountered 58 <coughs> people, 56 signed a petition that I put up, put together that highlights the points of concern, which he brought up already. The traffic is terrible. We have down Motherhead, the largest parish in the St. Charles area. Tons of traffic from the church, the school. Um, B, what would it be? South, the south side of the property. All the land swales down towards the south side of the property. The south side of the property is a natural watershed. That's the watershed that he's talking about that actually runs through Emerald Place subdivision. So, Anything that comes out of these vehicles, you know, you've got a coach that you don't have a dumping station, they get back from their trip, pop it open, all that is going to be going down into the watershed, any of the oils, antifreezes, and I heard a lot of ifs. Yeah, you know, we might be able to do this. You know, we're talking a three-acre lot with a house and a barn on it. By the time you put a fence back there, you're not putting up. 40-foot buildings. There's going to be nowhere to turn around. I know exactly what's going to come. It's going to get fenced in, and it's going to be a bunch of old boats, old cars, old RVs. It's going to be sloppy, which we already have the slop in the ones just down the street. They're just not maintained. Uh, the fences look terrible. Um, so like I said, uh, we didn't canvas the whole subdivision because nobody likes to answer the door to somebody with a clipboard. Um, but the people that we hit, I only had two people that said, I don't really care. So I submit these 
Give him a sign. Ms. Grace? <coughs> Any questions for, for Doug? And I, I find it interesting. He said that uh, all <coughs> touching properties have no problem with it. I, I find that hard to believe in that this, this guy on the north side, he purchased that, he cleared it out, he put a pond in there, he's, he's grown natural grasses, he's, he's made a nice, very nice clean habitat, you know, and, and his intent is just for nature. So I, I find it hard to believe, but. What's up? Yeah, nope, I, sir, I, sir, I, I sir, say, I, sir. I didn't say, I didn't say sir. Right. I just said, Doug. sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. Address up here. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Anything else? No. Okay, thank you. All right. Anyone else wish to speak? <clears throat> Please raise your right hand, ma'am. You solemnly declare and affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Okay, my name is Marie Roberts. I live at 5253 Westwood Drive. Uh, my husband, Ernie, and I own that property, and uh, we have lived there for over 35 years. It's part of a subdivision called Cottle Heights. Cottle Heights is totally residential. The 903 Motherhead, the property we've been talking about tonight, is right across the street from Cottle Heights. Um, it's located in a totally residential subdivision. The uh, location is a very, very busy intersection at Westwood and Motherhead. They did make some improvements a couple years ago, and those improvements <coughs> have greatly increased the traffic, the, the way the traffic flows. I mean, it's uh, much, much better, but it's still not ideal. And if you put a commercial property on Motherhead right there, it's going to just be a disaster. Um, there are three major schools that use that intersection. St. Joseph's Catholic School in Cottleville, and then the Francis Howe School District has Francis Howe Middle School and Francis Howe Central High School. The subdivision, I mean the school attendance area that all of the homes in the area are in, the public school area is, uh, <coughs> we, they all go to Central Middle School and uh, the um, Central High School. So they, and the kids use that all the time. The kids don't, are not always the best of drivers, but there's an awful lot of traffic at that intersection. It's also the intersection that the fire department uses and the police department uses. So if you've got some commercial property there and if they're trying to get some big motor homes into the area and there's a fire in the area, that's only a two lane road. Who's going to move? To get out of the way of the fire. You can't move those big motor homes very quickly. Um, if I remember right, and I found this in my some notes, that this same zoning request was uh, denied in 1989. Now the use for the property was different. I think the owners may have been different, but it was that same property that everybody objected to it being zone commercial because we don't need a commercial property at that intersection. The commercial properties that were on the gentleman's picture a while ago are several blocks away. They're on the uh, eastern side, a uh, eastern part of Westwood, whereas from Motherhead to the west or to the north, I forgot which way it goes. It, to me, that road runs north and south, but it's actually east and west. So east of that intersection, it's pretty much residential. We were told in 1998 that the area would become commercial in 10 years. Well, this is 20 years later, and it's not. Yes, there are some isolated commercial properties, but they're not on the north side of Westwood. I feel like that too often residential property is purchased instead of commercial property because it's a lot cheaper. Then commercial establishments decide they'll go in and ask for uh, a zoning change, and they expect it to be changed for them. I think this is unfair to residents that have purchased property in a totally residential area to have this piecemeal zoning coming in just because they think they can, can get it, and then it leaves us holding the bag. 
Why do we have zoning in the first place if it's going to be allowed to be changed by patchwork situations and according to anyone's fancy? Until there are developers that would purchase all this land through here at commercial rates and allow the residents and move the residents at no cost to the homeowners, then this area should stay zoned residential as it is and not allowed to become commercial bit by bit. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Mark. Okay. Anyone else? Good evening. Please write hand, please. You solemnly declare and affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Emma Combring, uh, 4 Shady Moss Court, Weldon Spring, Missouri, 63304. I'm here to, uh, I, I'm living in the subdivision uh, Emerald Place uh, of Mother Hill Road, and the reason I'm opposing this development is for traffic uh, safety for the neighborhood, traffic uh, in the <laughs> corner, the proposed corner, uh, Westwood, it's a very narrow road, two lanes, very narrow. There is no, sh we don't have shoulders in that road to be, a, to be handling this a cautious that the, a, Mr. Sacco proposed that will be the type of vehicles will be, a, will be stored in the, the place and leaving even going in or out of Mother Hair Road, that is a very uh, small uh, space also from the corner, that is not safe at all for the citizens, for the school buses, and the other part that I mentioned is safety. As the lady uh, before, uh, previous to me, expressed, there are several uh, schools, the Francis Howell uh, District, and there are a lot of kids waiting there. You see around the subdivision, around the neighborhood, you see the kids waiting for the school bus and having those uh, vehicles that do not belong to the uh, neighborhood, as Mr. Sacco said, when they come out of town, what is the purpose of us as residents having uh, vehicles just because somebody wants to make money at the cheapest way possible, then we have to deal with that, with the uh, safety issues for, from people that we don't know who they are. We have kids in the, are around the place waiting for buses. This uh, location won't have security, basically, is somebody living in the house, but they, are, they don't have any safety. They are trying to make money, and at the lowest uh, cost possible. That is not good for, for us, the residents, and we, ex we just, uh, the staff mentioned all the difficulties for the area, and definitely safety for the citizens, for the kids, and the property values will go down the hill with this kind of uh, businesses in the corner, uh, the traffic is horrible in the morning, in the afternoon, early, late, where, any time that you go, is a lot of traffic in that corner to be handling this, this kind of vehicles that are not easy for a single car, sometimes it's difficult and you have to be waiting or there is a line now handling that kind of uh, equipment, I don't think is in the best interest of the community to having somebody that want to storage their boats, they, their uh, vehicles from San Luis or wherever they have it, and then the residents have to live with that and affecting our properties and our uh, safety because we don't know who they are. If they have later, the, the previous cases that uh, I was listening, there is a, a zoning and then they establish a business. Then they come and ask for something else. How about if they, down the road, they wanna put a, a car sales, a lot car sales. Oh, they come and again ask for another <coughs> a reconsideration or something else. This uh, putting businesses in there, that just open the opportunity for the owner of the property, for the owner of the business to come back later and try to make more money, try to add something else because they 
are not living there. They don't have to deal with that. Mr. Sacco, address that he provide is O'Fallon, an office, and I'm pretty sure that he's not living around the area. So his property value won't be affected like will be for us. And I appreciate uh, your uh, time, and I hope you consider our uh, request to reject this uh, type of businesses in the so in the area that is residential absolutely residential area thank you good night thank you ma'am anyone else you solemnly declare and affirm that you will tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth in these proceedings are the pains and penalties of perjury i do Please state your name and address for the record, please. Lisa Anstead, and I live at 36 Shady Meadow Court. And I also oppose, because this is a residential community. And uh, Mr. Sacco stated that there is re uh, commercial in the area, and he even said like across the street. But he, this property is on Motherhead Road, and there is no commercial on Motherhead Road. So I just re would like to ask you to just leave it residential. Oh, that's Thank all I you. Have to say. Anyone else? Anyone else like to speak? Seeing none, we will. Oh, almost got it. Come <laughs> on up, sir. Do you sign a card? Okay. Uh, do you solemnly declare and affirm that you tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Mark Petrie, 1016 Motherhead, St. Charles, Missouri. Okay, Mark, go ahead. I oppose for the same reasons everybody else. I'm really concerned with the traffic. Uh, pulling in a motorhome that size, turning off right on the motorhead is going to be difficult at best. And I'm also worried about property values. Those are my objections. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak? <clears throat> Tell them to come up. Yeah. You need to come up. You solemnly declare and affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. Yes, I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Ron Singer, 5328 Precious Stone, uh, just down the street from a lot of these other neighbors. Uh, the entrance to, Mother, uh, to Emerald Place Subdivision is right off Motherhead Road, about a half quarter mile maybe down from Motherhead and Westwood. Yes, the Westwood intersection was improved. One of the questions I would consider, I would ask you guys to consider, is the applicant referred to beautifying that corner. How do you beautify with a security fence that you're gonna to have to put around? I have a RV myself that I store in a property. Every property I look at has chain link fence eight foot or 10 foot tall, sometimes with barbed bar wire on top of it. A, it would be a very expensive endeavor to beautify that corner with a security fence for $200,000 class A rigs, okay? Um, if you go up two properties on the south side of Westwood from the corner intersection of Motherhead and Westwood, two properties that you look at as you come up Motherhead and are about to turn left or right on Westwood, which is Old Highway 94. Two properties right there are both still residential. The houses are still on there. As far as I know, they're still occupied. From there, all the way down to South Breeze is already chain link fence and storage, as all of my neighbors have referred to on that side, they get run down, they're ill-kept, and all the property values, the other, all the property values would suffer if that's made commercial on that corner. There was also a lot of reference to the traffic in the area, and the St. Joseph School at 7.30 in the morning and 3.30 in the afternoon preclude trying to get through there in any timely manner. Because at that same time, Francis Hall High School 
and our middle school and St. Joe are all uh, getting a lot of traffic. You can cut through one, one subdivision and get to part of Highway N to get out of there. The traffic from RVs I don't think is going to be as much of an issue there as the detriment to the property values. And that's my input. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Anyone else want to speak? You speaking? No, I'm waiting until they got that I'm speaking on behalf. Well, hold, hold, on. hold on. No, he's supposed to come up now. Well, you want to, you, it's public comment. Well, are you speaking in a public comment or as the engineer for the project? Okay. Okay. So, ma'am, you've already, already spoke. Uh, so we'll close the public hearing and call the applicant uh, back if you want to address some of these concerns. Yes, sir. You solemnly declare and affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings from the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Dale Walterman, 802 East Main Street in Wentzville. Okay, go ahead, Dale. Uh, I prepared the little concept plan for Scott to try to give us some idea and use some idea of what may take place. Now, I just want to address a couple, maybe the in engineering comments about the runoff. I explained it to Scott. It's, from day one, he had a three-acre piece of ground. It was going to be gravel. It will have to have a detention basin, period. And it's going to go in that area that they were complaining about where all the runoff is. And according to new, you know, county regulations, that detention basin is going to have to have a filtration system that will filtrate all the impurities that may come from these vehicles as they sit there. Okay. And then the other thing is about the fill area. As we've shown on a concept plan, basically, where we show all these units is, is the limits of the fill area. We've got an 80-foot buffer to the west where the grade slopes down so nothing will ever be improved there. 40-foot buffer to the north with the same situation. And the other issue is if you stand on that side and look to the west, you cannot see a rooftop. That's pretty much all I got to say unless you have a question. Any questions for, for Dale? <coughs> okay. Thank you. Do you have anything, uh, Mr. Seiko? No, I think he, he yeah. pretty much hit uh, on uh, the concept about the detention. We are going to have to hold some of that water back and, and not just let it run off. And some of that problem, maybe it was probably, you know, the, some of that problem may have occurred through some of the development to the north. Um, but that certainly is not something that we've caused or our zoning is going to cause. So I don't see that at holding up the, the rezoning issue. And uh, as far as the traffic goes, I think we're going to be able to have the facility that gets the cars off the trap. It's not going to be, it's, 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 not, it's going to be able to get the traffic off the street quickly and not have a lingering problem with traffic, you know, hanging out there. So we're going to be able to get them in and out quickly. And so with having two ways in, I, I, I understand the concern. There's a lot of traffic there. That's my position. There's a lot of traffic there that supports commercial. And with all the things that we've talked about, I think that it warrants commercial to be there. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. We'll now bring uh, CUR 18-01 back to the commission. Any discussions, questions of staff? I have a question for staff. Are, are you okay with the solution on the, on the sewer? issue the solution well there's a I might just add that there's a um, a, a um, property maintenance code violation right now for the property because of the, the, the sewer it's not working so regardless if they get a CUP or not they're gonna have to address that and they're gonna have to make sure that they've got a functioning sewer system um, when, so when you say, are you okay he with said the, he was going to have only one sanitary sewer on the whole property. Is that going to work? It, it, as long as the, um, the amount of sewage they would need to produce for the property is, is low enough, yeah, it, it could work. And I think that's one of the reasons they're proposing what they are here is because it, would have, it wouldn't produce that much uh, sewage. It would just be it's basically the house. Oh, is that would be producing the sewage. Serve the house. Right. But it's it's not gonna be able to go beyond that with some sort of without some sort of 
more extensive, uh, more extensive sewer extensions. So um, what they have available now, I understand it, is a low pressure um, pipe. It would be a grinder pump, and it would uh, force sewage through that low pressure pipe up to a point where it could uh, by, fall by gravity into the sewage system. Now, if this went commercial, for instance, and they wanted to do anything more intensive, they probably would have to extend like a regular gravity line to the nearest point of gravity, which could be, I'm not sure, maybe 1,000 feet away or some, some distance that would be expensive. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, I, I, I certainly understand the, the thought on trying to make it commercial. However, I do think that with the uh, traffic there, the roads that, uh, especially west, would not be improved, the slope of the site, the ne uh, proximity of the intersection, I just don't uh, personally think that this seems like the right uh, decision to go commercial with it. That's so, my comment. Anyone else? Okay, we will, uh, hearing no other comments or questions, uh, first, the chair will entertain a motion to uh, the rezoning of the property from R1B to C2 General Commercial. I'll make a motion. Mr. Griffin, is there a second? Second. Mr. Klinghammer. Mr. McBride, how do you vote? No. I vote no. Mr. Cleary? No. Mr. Leonard? No. Mr. Fromm? No. Mr. Kuhn? No. Mr. McDonald? No. Mr. Klinghammer? No. Nope. Mr. Griffin? No. Okay. Uh, motion uh, <coughs> does not carry. Um, now we still vote on the conditional use permit for the R. For its current zoning? Yes, I would recommend yeah. voting on that as well, or okay. making a recommendation to the county council. Yeah. Uh, so the chair will entertain a motion to uh, approve mm -hmm. a conditional use permit for this property uh, with its current zoning of R1B. The conditional, conditional use permit would allow self-storage or mini warehouses, single-family residence, automobile, boat, Truck and recreational vehicle vehicle storage. So moved. Second. Mr. McDonald, how do you vote? No. Mr. Klinghammer? No. Mr. Griffin? No. Mr. McBride? No. I vote no. Mr. Cleary? No. Mr. Leonard? No. Mr. Fromm? No. Mr. Coon? No. No. Okay. Okay, the next thing on our agenda is, uh, well, with the agenda is uh, approval of the minutes from the March 21st, 2018 meeting. I have a motion to approve. So moved. For a second? Second. All in favor, sign aye. Yeah, aye. aye. Okay. Well, it's after it, I don't know. Other business. Uh, this is a conditional use permit amendment request. Um, the permit number is CUP 18-04. The applicant is uh, Mako Holdings, LLC. Property owners are Margie Joyce Heeman Revertible Trust. Uh, the use requested is a request to amend conditions 2 and 5 of conditional use permit C613, ordinance 04-033 for Schimmermeyer Quarry. Uh, the property is on AFF, Agricultural District with Floodway Fringe Overlay District. The area is 33.86 acres. The location is on the south side of Femi Osage Creek Road, west of Indian Creek Lane and Council District 2. Staff. Shimari Quarry has been operating here, as I understand it, since the early 1950s. St. Charles County adopted zoning first in 1959. So for years it operated without a uh, conditional use permit. 
in our ordinance, the provision is that um, if something is newly required to have a conditional use permit, but it didn't before, you can still operate without a conditional use permit, but anytime you want to expand it or change it, it needs to come back to get a conditional use permit. So in 2004, Shumari Quarry wanted to expand. They got a conditional use permit. Several of those conditions, though, is hindering the exp uh, expansion of this property that was an expansion of this property that was approved last year. You may remember that, um, so this property has a conditional use permit. Well, the property to just the south also is granted a conditional use permit. It's a separate property, <laughs> separate property owners, but Michael Holdings has a lease for, to operate a quarry on both of the tracks. One of the 2004 conditions was that they leave a 100 foot, what I'll call a 100 foot um, buffer of rock on the south side to protect one of the homeowners that was nearby. She's actually sold out for the expansion. So that house is no longer there. <coughs> and so the reason for that buffer is really no longer there. Also, it required a berm that had to be uh, built and extended as they kept moving the quarry south. They had to keep uh, moving that berm south. Well, that's no longer needed either because the homeowner is no longer living there. So I see the removal of these two conditions from or county staff does as in, in some ways a housekeeping measure because technically if we didn't remove that condition, they'd have to leave up what I call a 100-foot wall of rock between their two quarries which doesn't make any sense. What they're proposing is just to keep digging the rock back from, from one piece of property to the other and extend their quarry back. It, uh, again, the, the reasons or rationales for, the, or the rationale for those conditions is no longer there because uh, Catherine Kling, the previous property owner, is sold out and she no longer lives at that house nearby. Now having said that, this does not change whatsoever the conditions for buffers on this to the property of the south that uh, property owners came and spoke about and, and actually negotiated and, and had placed in the conditional use permit for the property for the south. It does not deal with it that whatsoever. This is more of an internal wall of rock between the two parts of the quarry. So <coughs> county staff is recommending for approval. Any questions? Yeah, that the house, because um, uh, when that was there, I drove the whole property. That the house that's off Indian Creek Lane, that's the one where Catherine sold. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, there were a lot of people here that night. Remember that? Oh yeah. Well, mm -hmm. she has a she was a wealth of history. She knew the probably knew more about the history of uh, St. Charles there than Steve Elman, uh, <laughs> as far as history is concerned. But she's she sold that. That's amazing. She did. Okay. Yeah. With a with a piece of property that they've purchased, on the and I'm not which way this direction. So I'm just looking at it, saying yeah, south. South. Is there any need for a buffer on the southern end of the new property that's been purchased? That's all in place. Those buffers are. There's a pretty extensive buffer, honestly, all the way around it, to help protect properties and homes to the south. Well, but I'm, what I'm getting, my understanding is that you're, the, where it's, we see it's dug out now, that's, so we're gonna move that 100 foot buffer from that property, right? Re they, it's proposed to remove that 100 foot buffer. Okay, so they can just keep digging into the ground to the south that they purchased. Mm -hmm. So my question is, is there a need for a buffer on the southern end of the new property? What does the new property abut to? That's already taken care of through their conditional use permit that was approved last year, or 2016, 2016. They address those buffers, and actually there are pretty extensive uh, setbacks and buffers. For, for the, the new property? Yes, for the new property of the south. Okay, well, I don't yep. remember doing that. Did we do that? Yeah. Yes, yeah. And well, I was on <laughs> vacation, okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't put that in the record. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, never mind. Any other questions? Staff. Okay, so applicant, uh, now that I see you, I think I do remember. Yeah. I'm a just good looking, you don't miss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you solemnly declare and affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Philip Myers, 
um, my home home phone or home address yes. is 6868 Waymire Drive, Washington, Missouri. Go ahead. Okay. Um, as Mr. Myers has uh, described, what were, uh, uh, and I, I will answer your question just so you feel comfortable with what happened is, we, we, when we came a year and a half ago, I think it was, when you guys approved the conditional use permit for the new property that we purchased, uh, we, we gave up a whole lot of berm, a whole lot of, of uh, we, there's a hundred foot at the far end we gave another 100 or 500 foot by 500 foot corner because there was a landowner that worried about that. And we, we gave up 250 feet of berm along Indian Creek uh, where the, the woods were so that uh, the adjacent landowner on the other side of the road wouldn't see us. So we gave up quite a bit of that going around that. What we're asking now is, uh, can I walk over to that? I, mean, I think you guys know what we're. What, Take that mic. Okay. Yeah. I'll turn it off. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Give it to you. No. Just, Just speak talk, loudly. Talk, 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 talk. As you can see, that right now is the way it's uh, the condition use permit for the existing quarry is when we reach that property that we bought uh, a couple of years ago. There, there was a hundred foot setback and a berm that had to keep moving toward that south uh, side of the uh, oh to the south side of that quarry. What what we're asking is uh, for multiple reasons, but uh, well, for one multiple reasons. One is it doesn't make much sense to, to come up to the line and then to skip 100 feet and then to start again. Uh, for one, uh, and one of the reasons is that's going to create a, a very big hazard that DNR will not like. Can you hear me? Okay. DNR will not, will not be happy when they, uh, we've already talked, the DNR is fine with this also, uh, to move on through that. But uh, I think it's, it's, a, it's kind of just, it's a housekeeping thing that we're, trying to figure out here just to get it so it's correct. So that when we get to that line, we don't have to set back 100 feet from the ground that I bought, uh, that we can continue that quarry. Because that's the whole, that was the, that was the whole reason for this, this deal. And you gave us a conditional use permit was for, to mine that new property. So it's, it's not really complicated. It's, it's just kind of a clean up. Any questions for the app? Motion to approve. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. I have to open the public hearing for uh, CUP 18-04 amending C613. <laughs> Last yeah. time I did this, there was a million people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Anyone uh, here wishing to speak? If not, I'll close the public hearing and we'll bring this back to the council. And I have a question. Uh, what was been presented uh, Mr. Meyer, was this is a request to amend conditions two and five, but should that be to delete conditions two and five? Sorry, let me get this. Yeah, it should be to delete, but let me verify. Yes. Yeah, delete the conditions for the berm on the south property line and delete the condition for the 100-foot buffer to the south property line. So that would be two and five? <coughs> two yes. and five, yes. Okay. So the chair will entertain a motion to delete conditions two and five that are currently set forth in conditional use permit C16-13 and ordinance 04-033. So moved. Second. Oh, there's a race on that. I'll give that to Mr. Uh, Cleary. Mr. Leonard, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Cleanhammer? Yes. Uh, Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. McBride? Yes. I vote yes. Mr. Cleary? Yes. Passes nine to zero. Okay. 
the other thing that's on the agenda I had added after last month's meeting, but it's late, um, was to discuss, to have a discussion and to develop some uh, specific rules of procedure, uh, particularly around the uh, public hearing. Um, I've done some research, uh, some uh, court decisions. Um, court decisions, uh, even though Mr. Denoff doesn't agree, say that the public is entitled to an opportunity to be heard, not necessarily a right. Okay. But at this late hour, I'm thinking that the best probably is to maybe I meet with uh, our council and we can make up some proposals for consideration. Sounds like a great idea. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> if everyone's agreeable with, with that. I second that. Okay. Um, no other business to be brought towards the commission? Um, entertain a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second? Oh, we just, we did that. We did, we did, that. We did, we did the minutes. <laughs> All those in favor, sign aye. 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 aye.